just turned the big 4-0. But his old mate Scotty Waters wants to spoil the party. The Saints win and they are back. Together they were assistants at Pi Park and now they're at the helms of opposing clubs. And he doesn't let the Pies down. While the Magpies are in a top four berth, the Saints are clinging to their hopes of making the finals. Lines up and kicks the goal of the afternoon. St Kilda's old guard. Magnificent kick, Stevie Mill. Are running hot. Still open goal. Hayes, Del Santo, Montagna, and of course, Goddard. Goddard! But the Magpies want to put the icing on Bucks' cake. This is Saturday Night Footy. Yes, time to get this one underway. The Saints stroll out on the MCG. Absolutely perfect conditions here at the home of football, the MCG. Not a drop of rain, been a beautiful day in Melbourne today. Very little wind out there as well. The Saints know how important this is. If they don't win tonight, they may well be two games out of the eight, and that makes it very, very difficult for them. On the other hand, the black and white, Collingwood, a chance to really consolidate a top uh, top four position, perhaps even second there. A couple of changes, you can see Polo's come in as a late change. Farron Ray is also in there as well. Janelle, in his fourth game, continues to be the sub for the Saints. Boys, Nick Rewalt uh, in this lineup is obviously a really important player. How important, Richo? Oh, very, very important. He's an absolute champion, Nick Rewalt. And the start of this year, some people were wondering whether his best was passed, but he's been able to get on top of his knee injuries and he's starting to do this again, taking big contested marks. He's been one of the best overhead marks in the game for a long, long time now. But what he has got back, I reckon, Timmy, in the last month, his, his movement is really good. He's getting right up the ground and he ran Brian Lake around last week and was best on ground with 14 marks, nearly back to his best. That's a good point, Richo. And the other thing is that they've changed the way they play St Kilda. It's a much better way to play for a forward. Looking at the Collingwood lineup, they've got five premiership players that have come back into that side tonight. Uh, there's six changes now with that late change as well. Taron out of the side. So that looks like they're trying to settle their side down as they head towards the finals. Travis Cloak. Um, Look, he's been so much discussion point, Travis Cloak, about his contract, Richo, and what he's doing uh, next season. Got six goals last week against Giants, which is a great thing for his confidence. Yeah, look, it doesn't matter who it's against. If you kick six goals, you're going to feel a lot better about your footballer. Bigger test tonight, obviously, against the Saints. They've been pretty good. They're putting a lot of pressure on the opposition around the ground. They're one of the best tackling teams in the competition, the Saints. So there's not going to be a lot of easy ball coming into Travis tonight, but we know he's such a great contested mark. Yeah, really important. This is an important part of his game, goal kicking as well. Another important aspect of this game is Cameron Ling out on the oval. Wants to talk about Brendan Goddard. Lingy, we welcome you. Thanks, BT. Well, we all know how quality a player that Brendan Goddard is. He had a different role last week. He played on Matthew Boyd at stoppages, playing a lot more through the middle of the ground and almost a semi-run-with role and was able to do it really effectively. I'd like to see more of that. I'd love for him to go to Scotty Pendlebury. Pendlebury is an absolute Rolls-Royce of a player, but so is Goddard. Play on Pendlebury with a really good defensive balance, but also get the ball through the middle of the ground and try and hurt him in attack as well. Cameron Ling down there at ground level. The importance of Brennan Goddard, that man there, ultimately important. Wellingham as well. This is going to be a cracking game. Stay with us. Saturday Night Football gets underway next. on a Saturday night. Perfect evening for football. There is the home of footy. A blaze as we wait for this big game. OK, it's going to be uh, Nick's call. So, heads this call. And tails it is. Thank you. Nick Maxwell to the right of screen. The city end at the MCG here. Crowd is pretty good, I'd say, around about 60,000. Not that dissimilar to what we got here at the MCG last night. Big game, really important for both sides. That's pretty obvious. By the way, the uh, subs for uh, tonight's game. Uh, Young, of course, is the uh, sub for Collingwood. And Donnell, in his fourth game, for the fourth time, is the sub for the Saints. 
There's Tane Beams on screen there now. Jason Graham, Rich Oak, yeah. came. He let it out of the bag that that's the bloke that they were going after tonight. He's been just a wonderful gatherer of the ball, and he's been a goal kicker as well. So they've identified in the Saints as the most important midfielder that they need to stop. And that's a real feather in his cap. He has had a tremendous year, Dane Beams. Really, really come along in leaps and bounds, and it just says a lot about the respect the opposition has for him, the fact that Clint Jones is going to him, and all of their midfielders kick mm. goals. Dane Swan, five last week. Beams kicks goals. We know Dale Thomas kicks goals. Pendlebury can get down there. It's one of the greatest strengths of this Collingwood team. And I've seen Beams handle the tag really well in the past as well uh, tonight, so that's going to be interesting to see him and Pendlebury on screen now, and you're quite right. When they get that spread, and Wellingham's back in the side tonight too, so they do have a lot of midfield talent. I reckon that's almost a tag on Dempster. Dempster's a great intercept player for the Saints. Wellingham may be doing a negative job on him, I reckon, Timmy. All right, get this one underway. Jolly and big boy McAvoy in the middle. <laughs> Umpires tonight. Farmer, Margetts, and McInerney will put it on the turf to start the game. MCG, Collingwood consolidating top four, St Kilda trying to stay in touch with the final eight. A loss here for them would be a disaster, slipping two games behind potentially. Gee, there's a lot of work going off behind the plate at the moment to BT between Harry O'Brien and Stevie Milne. That's the problem. That's the problem. I mean, Jones has got to tag him, but he's got to make sure he does nothing illegal. Penelope ran into trouble. Boys already onto that tag with Beams. There he is again. Had a couple already. Reed all the way down from half back. That's a ripping kick. Probably should have made a better deal of it there, Sinclair. By the way, Dane Swan needs just five possessions in this game to become uh, the 79th player to have achieved 5,000 touches of the footy. <laughs> Five touches, Richo. It's Only 79 people have achieved it. Well, he's the most possessions in the competition this year, and he's missed two games. It just shows you how much of the footy Dane Swan gets. Heading for 5,000. Boy, magnificent. Sad little kick forward, and now the Saints get it down there quickly to Gilbert. Nick, 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 come back for Difficult Nick, angle. Gary Walt wanted it. Sam, two metres. Made his name as a defender, Gilbert, gone up forward. And a left footer has just lacked, I reckon, the composure there. Most players you'll see relax and work it out. Richo, you mentioned that he made his name as a defender. It looks as though he's been sent into the forward line as a job on Nick Maxwell to try and keep his influence out of the game. Just saw Lenny Hayes at that stoppage too, Richo, going to Swan and just pushing him and getting the right body position. He actually won the stoppage too. Got a good feel already here. Del Sano tried to spear the ball in. Missed Milne and Shaw recovers it. Surely not deliberate. He was under an enormous oh. pressure. He got knocked over in the tackle. Yes. Oh, Dean Margetts, I'm telling you. Look, I don't want to get off on a bad foot, but he's a, he's a whistleblower. Look, I think we're just going to have to start accepting that. It just The defenders have got nothing now. They no. can't play to the boundary he line. Bowled over as he kicked he, it. He did, but he went directly to the line, and that's what the umpire's looking at. All right. The voice of reason, Tim Watson. Saad comes in. Real tough angle. Great lob. St Kilda get the first. He's been great this year, Saad. For the Saints. Coming in uh, from the Bullants, I believe, last year, he kicked 40 odd, maybe 50 goals out there, and he's added a real spark to their board line, some pace, and hitting the scoreboard as well. Been living at the old coach's house, too. Oh, is he? In the garage at uh, Grant Thomas's place. There you go. Living in a garage? <laughs> Converted. Convince me, Tim Watson, that that's deliberate. Well, I reckon that's... What do you reckon he had on his mind when he got hold of that ball? He had one thing on his mind, and that was to take the ball over the boundary line. It went straight at the boundary line. I don't reckon the umpire had any other choice to make. Back Far too much common sense for us, Colling, BT. Collingwood! Yeah. Well, Collingwood ball here. Collingwood, Dane Beams. Dane held by one arm. Dane Swan or Dane, Dane Beams? Well, there's two Dane stoppage Beams. free kicks already. Dane Beams. Dane Swan. So the players Dane need Beams. to be aware right now, OK? Those sorts of things are not going to be tolerated by the umpire. Time back on. Play on. 
Oh boy, officious. Here we go with Swan inside the Saints defending beautifully from Fisher there. And now an opportunity out wide for Gilbert. Once again on his favoured left side. Good composure showing. Goddard had to do it as well. It was really well done. He created something then. Brendan Goddard. Polo, who's a late inclusion in the side, finds Rewald on the lead. And this is a great start from the Saints. Yeah, Ben Reid just lost all touch on Nick Rewald there. I think he tried to anticipate Rewald going to the boundary there. He turned his back. Barrett, oh, you Barrett, can't do Barrett that as a side. defender, especially on a guy like Rewald. He'll do you every day of the week. Just needed a little bit more touch on Nick there. Now, Tom Hawkins has proven that you can really spruce this part of your game up. We'll watch Rewald with interest cool. tonight. That looks damn good. A powerful hit through the big ones. That's a great start by the Saints. He looked so confident when he went back and kicked that ball to Nick Revolt. Didn't think about it for too long. He discussed it on our commentary a couple of weeks ago, a couple of Friday nights ago, about how he was reasonably happy with the way that he's kicking the ball at the moment. Just had really good momentum, Tim. He kicked right through the football, kept his head down, and he kicked the first three goals last week against the Doggies, and he's feeling good about his goal kicking at the moment. There's a shot start there who uh, kicked that first goal for the Saints tonight. You, Just talked about it. Living did you in say a he's garage. living in someone's garage? Well, he's living in a converted garage at Grant Thomas's home. What? He's a mate of Tyson uh, Thomas. Uh, he oh. played football with him. And Tomo, bring him in the house, not in the <laughs> garage. It's very polite. There's no room in Tomo's house. Hayes goes inside looking for Cozzy. Nathan Brown, a late inclusion in this side as Chris Tarrant was a withdrawal tonight. Is has Dean Polo. Hasn't seen the ball down in Collingwood's Ford oh, 50 yet, here, but boys. Gwilt's got the job on Chris Dawes, and Fisher, Sam Fisher, is playing on Travis Cloak. Never yes. heard of a palatial garage, but if Grant <laughs> Thomas has got one, I'm happy. <laughs> so the difference there is that that ball went up the line as opposed to directly over the line. Hey, I'm not convincing either of them, are hey, Darren, I? The 40. No, no, I don't. No. No. Haven't got me yet. I I'll reckon you've got to let the defenders have oh. some sort of out and they don't have much at the moment wellingham tackled aggressively side bottom got one high by going low and he got the desired result so this is a really effective start from the saints they've been aggressive in the early part of this game collingwood haven't had a lot of the ball as yet and you get the feeling that this is just a professional feel the touch get a bit of the footy and feel a bit better about ourselves here Reed. Now that kick's got a lot of height, but we'll find the Thomas target. The mark, play on. Thomas wind to Seedsman. Dempster's the plus Thank one you. at the moment for the Saints behind the ball, so this is going to actually stop the flow of Collingwood here. Seedsman around. Geary the man on the mark, and there is the extra that Tim just spoke about. Dempster does exactly what Tim said it would do. That's what he does, BT. He's just one of the best intercept players in the competition at the moment, Dempster. Elliot. The ball shoveled out. Here comes Swan. Closes in on Dempster. Good pressure from the Saints. Seen those two free kicks paid to Dane Beams already, and we saw it last week. Cochin and Mark Murphy yeah. had tags. They're really clamping down on the taggers at the moment. They are indeed. Here's Wellingham. Put his nose in and quickly got out of there. Fair bit of hair hanging over the fringe of Jared Wellingham. That's obviously a sort of a reasonably modern cut, Richo, not yeah. unlike yourself. Yeah, very modern uh, style. Swanee's got a little bit of that style happening at the moment as well. You got a name for it, Richo? Uh, yeah, look, I'll uh, come back to you for that. Sort time. of a post Beatles sort of thing. Here is a Swan on the left. Ball, good ball, got a lot of carry. Talk about something out of nothing. Dane Swan with a ripper and he's non preferred. That is just an unbelievable bit of play there from Dane Swan. I mean, he was directing the ball really to the top of the square, but had a lot of carry on it. The Saints actually, that's a terrific tap there by Jolly, too, with the left hand over the top to the space. And there, Fisher, just watch that again. That is just a beautiful, classical bit of ruck work from Jolly. And the two-on-one then, but when it goes over your head, you can have four-on-one if you like. It's not going to make any difference. Doesn't get much better, that ruck work, does it? That was a direct hit over the back to Dane Swan on the move, and I think their hairstyle might be a hipster the type of hairstyle, Timmy, that you're looking for there. Melbourne Storm boy in the crowd. I think they had a win today. 
They lost four in a row, the Storm, so, yeah, pretty happy with that. Won't catch on, Richo. They're playing the uh, weaker team in the comp, of course, today, Richo, but here is a not 15 call from the umpire, Sinclair, on the end, Penelbury, just with the one claw on the side bottom, straightens, gets a really good look from 45. Clearances 7 to Collingwood's way, so they're doing a lot of damage around the, the stoppages at the moment, the Pies. Touched off the kick in from Gwilt, so that won't be paid to Blair. Beams works wide, looks for an opportunity with Seedsman. And there's another fringy sort of flowy, sort of fluffy look. <laughs> Going on with the youth of today. <laughs> Richo. Well, I don't know why you're asking me, Brian. Oh, well. Neither do I, but. Push out, Ben McAvoy. Big boys ball here at half back. Against Reid. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. McAvoy. Hands in the back. Yeah, definitely hands Five in the back. back. Booms is up to five already, Richo, so Jones is going to have to tighten up on him for that to be working. Thanks, Tyson. Jack Stephen just ran into Goldsack then. Looked like he got a mini corky. Needs a bit of support here in the way of a shepherd. Tough little customer. Good ball to Rewalt. Strong overhead. Yeah, he's getting back into some of his best marking form, Nick Rewalt. No, no, play on! Farron Ray stretching there. Now to shoot by Shaw. High ball, Penelbury in front. Longish arms that Penelbury has. Great awareness. Geary, Goddard. He's multi-talented. And that was a really good ball to Saad. Great yeah, delivery okay. on his non-preferred from Brendan Goddard. That's why you want him putting the ball inside 50. He had the 34 the disposals last balls, week, but only put in. the ball inside 50 Amen. once. You want to do. Five you want him forward. putting it in there at least five or six times because he'll hit a target most times. Not good from the set shots last week. The Saints kicked eight goals, nine. Sard here with a difficult one. Only about five or six metres inside the boundary line. Good look at the brand new Sharon. Punt road in, favours the right foot of Saad, but sprayed it across the face. Jolly with a big punch. Here's his opposite number. McAvoy through one, through two. Polo, Del Sano on his wrong side. Great kick around the body, Nick Del Sano. Oh, great finish by Nick Del Sano. Having another really consistent season is Nick Del Sand. I reckon Darren Jolly did the right thing then, got back to the line to make the spoil, but just punched it straight back into the danger zone to his direct opponent, big boy McAvoy, who got it off to Dell, and that was a great finish. I reckon he'll have some impact on the game tonight too, because they don't really employ a hard tag, Collingwood. Nicky Dell in game two, three, four for him. And just liking his work, admiring his own stuff. Great matchup out here on the wing, too, at the moment. Thomas and Del Sando on each other. A couple of players with a bit of flair there. Natural ability, a plenty. Halfback, the man we spoke to in the warm up is Graham. Have a look at Big Boy. He's getting himself involved in the game. Dishes to Ray. They have been particularly good with the short kick, St Kilda, so far. And they're trying to draw the Collingwood defence up the ground too, BT. They're honouring those leads. They're trying to keep them as honest as they possibly can, these Collingwood defenders. This one here about retreating is about spread and spreading the defenders to try and find space now. Well, you don't mind doing that V-switch as long as you can play on. The player who gets the ball when you go back with Sam Fisher, he needs to be able to play onto the other side of the ground. If he can't, you're just taking the pressure further and further away from your goals. Bit of modern uh, Richo talk, the <laughs> V-switch. Uh, I'm sure that uh, that'll cotton on as we go along, Richo, the V-switch. Oh, I'm not sure if that's what they call it, but it looks like a V, Brian. Think about it. Montagna, wide to Jones. Lurking near the boundary line. Umpire said you've run off the mark, so he says get on with it. Now Montagna again, difficult angle, nurtured the ball. Stephen on the lead. Will it be paid? Yes, it will. BT, they're using the width of their forward line, aren't they? We've now seen three attacks yeah. that have actually gone as wide almost as you can possibly go. Stephen. Umpire wants to set him on the angle first before he's allowed to play on. They're really controlling the game at the moment. Jack Stephen goes 
Wide kick again. down the line, kept alive. I think it might have been Geary. Goddard got absolutely clobbered by Wellingham. I thought a little high. Milne. Blair was in there as well. And the Saints with all of the play at the moment. Here's that solid tackle there from Wellingham. May have gone a little bit high there. Uh, Goddard just bending over in the in the process, but a little tough. Yeah. Gilbert up. Montagna keeps it alive. Rewalts the worry over the back here. Shaw did well. Thomas, does he concede? No, he doesn't. And I tell you what, Milne was under the smother. I reckon what they're trying to do too, if they do lose control of the ball, it'll be very close to the boundary line, which means that they're able to push up and hem Collingwood in and stop them from getting an early and quick release from their back half. Was that footy? Hayes did the ruck work in the absence of a St Kilda ruckman. Here the umpire's call there, play on us. Going to extract his seedsman, and now go, look at the players condense into hey, the smaller hey, area. Hey, yeah, they've got it locked in here in their hey, forward line. The Saints got a couple of tweets. BT Jared Higgins has said, "Great results so far for the for the Pies. We need to make them count tonight." Oh. Well, the Saints are in control early, Jared. So the Pies need to get some control of the football. Oh boy! He's got another one here too, Richo. Uh, bring back uh, Watto that. next week. More reenactments. Loved it. Very, very popular segment, I reckon, Timmy. Tweet in some ideas for Watto's reenactments. Absolutely, it was a, a real, a real winner. Absolute bonanza, Watto uh, out there recreating Milne. There's Swan, Gilbert. Some of the best work, Sinclair. Um, Hodgie was reluctant, and Lingy was a, uh, he was there. Kick around the corner, Geary now, the Saints knock over. Have a look at this in the background here. Brown and Cozzy, watch for the stomp here. Just a little... Missed him. Yeah, lucky he missed, I reckon. It was just a warning shot. Yeah. Fired out the side of the bow, Richo. That's all it was. Just uh, keep your hands above deck, otherwise they may be trodden on. This is a really great result for the Saints early on. This is exactly the way that they would have wanted to play this first quarter of football. So they're getting it on their terms at the moment. The ball is really moving slowly away from these stoppages, which enables them to get one-on-ones. Get the feeling that Scott Waters has put a lot... Well, he's obviously put a lot of work in. What a stupid thing to say, but it's working for him. Yep, it is at this early stage of the game. So it sort of gets back to the coaches boxing Collingwood now, and Nathan Buckley's got to make that next move and just try and open the game up and get it on their terms. Might just go down to Lingy. We know that Jones and Beams are playing on each other. What else are you seeing out there, Lingy? Yeah, I'm seeing the St Kilda players try and control the wingman there. We just see Sidebottom getting that kick in there. But players like him and Dale Thomas are so important for Collingwood. You can see Scotty Waters' inside knowledge. He's trying to play Del Santo and Montagna on those players to quell their influence. Well, there is Montagna. Gets it onto Gilbert. A sparing ball. Not quite to Armitage. Now the rebound. First time in the game that this has been allowed for the Pies. And a long ball down there and looking for Elliott. But once again, the Saints, Geary, Farron Ray and now Clint Jones. He understands his limitation. Jones likes to handball rather than kick. Eventually out the back door, Hayes. O'Brien swoops on him. Collingwood with some numbers. Blair, clean at the ground level. Jolly now, not a lot of thought in that, was there? And there he is again, Dempster. Just reads the play so well. Richard, there was a line of defenders, five, five defenders across the ground there, Lee. Yeah, Timmy, it didn't work out for them then, but it, it, St Kilda overhandling the ball there and firing off too many handballs, plays into Collingwood's hands. They like to bring that pressure, create the turnovers and get really good entries off the back of it. Unfortunately, it didn't work out there for Darren Jolly, but that sort of thing is going to hurt. St Kilda controlling the footy a lot better and getting it forward. Over the top, Rewald gets a look. Here's Milne. He thinks about the goal. And the closing Collingwood presence of Nathan Brown was effectively yeah, bleeding from the mouth too, I think. On the contest, though. Well, that's, that was a great smother. Whether he got that in the mouth, but there's certainly a bit of blood on the mouth of Nathan Brown. McAvoy in front, Milne again. Little soccer beams now. Back 50, risky kick inside. Players often taught to go boundary side, not back inside. So I told the under 12s anyway. O'Brien, side bottom, 
great in close handball. The modern player is so good at that. Here's this extra number that you speak about, the plus one, Tim, for the Saints again. What are they going to do about that, the Pies? Well, they're going to try and draw him out at some stage of the game. They'll wait and see how it works out. If they can't score, then they're going to have to do something about it. But they've had a couple of opportunities that they've just fluffed the Magpies when they've gone forward. Maxwell now starting to open up a bit the game here. And advantage paid. The kick was going to Maxwell. The advantage is paid. Jolly to Blair through the middle. Looking for Pendlebury. Needs to get this on the hop. Around the body. Thought about it inside. Said, I can't make that click. That kick. Now Sinclair looking for Cloak. Deliberately pushed it to Pendlebury. Side bottom. Back to Pendlebury. Now Cloak. Once again, a two-on-one presence for the Saints. Three-on-one. Look at the numbers for them. They are everywhere. Well, last night, Josh Gibson was kept out of the play, and they need to keep Dempster out of it. If you don't get him involved and lead him out of the play, he's going to come third man in or mark the ball all night, and that's what the Cats did to Gibson last night. They got him out of the play, and Hawkins was the beneficiary of it. Pendlebury really tidy by foot to Dale Thomas. And the Saints have just got to look after the ball a bit better when they come out of defence. Thomas draws Wellingham to the ball. That was what I call the magnetic pass where the kicker forces the leader to come. Yeah, it's a good call. It's a beautiful kick too. And that's exactly what Lingy was talking before. We saw the Saints trying to escape off half-back. And they just handballed the ball. And that's playing into Collingwood's hands because that's where they had their numbers and they were able to apply that pressure and force a turnover. Wellingham, 35, a lot of altitude. Accuracy is good. Collingwood get their second goal. I'll be happy with that, Sharon Wellingham. His first kick back after his little rest that he had. We all know what happened there. And that was a great kick by Dale Thomas. He drew, as BT said, drew Wellingham into the ball. Dale Thomas knew that he had a mismatch. He had big boy McAvoy defending him, and he just said, hey, lead at me because big boy won't be able to go with you, Sharon. Jared Wellingham with his first goal of the game and a three goal to two game now. Saints by five points. The hipster hairdo there. Yeah, it looks magnificent. Notice the little tattoo behind the right ear as well. Get a close up of that later. I'm sure you'll be interested. Jolly. Simpkin through a little bit of traffic. Did well. Jack Stephen couldn't control it. Now they get a look for Aguirre. Just going to show a bit more poise and composure here when they're using the ball. Now they're out. But Hayes on out in the wing. Goddard gets that job done to Tim's choice in Hayes. Takes Goldchak on, brushes him aside, just pure strength. Gilbert running onto his favourite side, hammered that ball into Rewalt. Had a little trouble getting over. It was a difficult one to pick up off his toes. And now Sinclair. Goes long and deep to a one-on-one. -on -one. Cloak did really well. He'll be paid the free, but he marked it anyway. That was just great. Forward play. Look, he's got a size mismatch on Gwilt. Gwilt's 188, Travis is 195. Yeah. Too strong. If you can isolate that, that's going to be a win yeah. for them all night. But at the other end of the ground, it was Gilbert that went too quick with the ball. He actually had to just slow it down. He played on. He kicked to a one on four, and it was always going to be a difficult kick to hit. 41 goals for the year. 50 is not a problem for Cloak. Oh, swing right. Accuracy is on that occasion. Good that's, effort. That's a confidence builder for him, and they just need to try and isolate him more because that is a big mismatch. Seven centimetres and a lot of strength. Travis should be able to expose that if they can get it to him one on one. Dempster. Jack Stephen, the boy from Lawn in Victoria down there on the Great Ocean Road, and just got. The bouncing part of the game slightly wrong. And Scotty Waters is going to be really upset about this part of the game too. 12 to 3 is the clearances at the moment. So Collingwood just getting their hands on the ball at the stoppages like this and moving the ball too cleanly. McAvoy to Goddard. Been really good so far, Brendan Goddard. Into the man that lives in a garage, Saad. <laughs> Thanks to Grant Thomas, refuses to have him in his house. <laughs> Says get out in the garage. Here's Geary. Del Sano now. He's got the left. Gee, how Beams didn't know that. Jones sees something he likes. Harry O'Brien drops off. 
We talked about those clearances, Timmy. Dane Beams, who has the number one tagger on him, has had five clearances. And he's up to eight positions as well. Yeah, it's not working. I'm not sure what you can do. This is Swan's 5,000th career possession. There it is. That's a lot. How come, like in basketball, the lights flash and everything, nothing happened? What, can you, how many was it again? The 5,000th. That's it, PT. James Holt! <laughs> Got a bit of uh, lip, uh, lip tie. I didn't know you had a lisp. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bit of eiter. Uh, nice here time. is uh, Maxwell. Move it on. What's a lip tie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All down the line. Tim being silly. Ah, that's a great sign. It is a good sign. That's a great contested mark from Dawes. He's, he's got to move it on quickly though now because McAvoy's getting back. Oh. Umpire called, play on, correct a tackle by Jack, Stephen, Saad, on to Stephen, he's strong and he's bustling, this will open him up here, can they move it, Armitage to Del Sano, sees Graham, he's a long kick, has he got time, to oh, on, great Sinclair with a run down tackle from behind, brilliant play from both mobs. Jason Graham loves running through 50 and having a shot at goal, but that was just a great chase from Sinclair. That, what's the rule there? Like, he hadn't moved off his line. But how, umpire called play on. How long does he have before he has to... Well, once it's play ball? on, it's play on. You're in play. How long, though? About 20 seconds, I think they count in their heads. That wasn't 20. No, I think around the ground. Sorry to jump in there, Timmy. I think around the ground, it's only eight or nine seconds. Yeah, I think you're right, Timmy. I think you're a long way off. It was back in the 80s, I was thinking about looking. <laughs> Kick inside to the garage man. And Saad has taken the mark. 45, 50 metres out. He's uh, playing really well. This is his third shot at goal. But once again, it was Goddard putting the ball inside 50. Ahmed Saad. He's already had four inside 50s, Brendan Goddard. Only had one last week. and The run-up's longer than the kick. Yeah, we saw this last week. It's got a bit Boy, of Michael Holding about it. Has he got a long run-up? Saad. Very erect posture as he comes in from 48 out, and that is absolutely magnificent. Sad goals. Hey, Richo, Richo, I want you to analyse that because yep. I watched him last week, and the thing that struck me was he went back a long way to take the kick. But then he didn't really get any momentum through the ball. I mean, he walked all the way. He only took three. He really only broke into a, into a bit of a gallop for the last three steps. Yeah, it's a, it's a different sort of style. It, I reckon he has 25 or 30 steps, but you. But doesn't uh, really get any momentum. But kick two tonight, it's looking all right. Have a look at this for composure. Look at the sort of upness of it. The, the straight back. BT, I, I counted them. 36 steps he took then. And no problems with the journey. Ahmed Saad, well done to you. Swan, 5,001. Touches of the nut. Here's Wellingham at half back to tidy up for the pies. Swan again will go inside. No, he goes outside to Thomas. Now inside, under some pressure, was Seedsman. Back to Thomas, kick in there, looking for but not finding for Solo. Farron Ray, great in close handball from the Saints. Rewalt was two on one. Polo. Throw, says the umpire. What would you do with Brendan Goddard, Timmy? Would you have someone sit on him, maybe a Wellingham? He's really damaging at the moment. Eight touches, four inside 50s. Beautiful robe there by Elliott. Blair kept it alive. For Solo, back to side, bottom hold ball. Here comes Jolly, got the hands directly in front. Add to the question now, Tim. Well, I reckon uh, the main problem with Goddard is he's going to get the ball around the ground. The main problem, as you've already identified, is in that forward half. That's where you really need to make sure that you're playing shoulder to shoulder with him. I reckon they've got a problem already, the Saints, though, too, and that's with Dame Beams. I mean, he's been tagged by Jones, their best run with player, and he's had influence on this game. He's had nine touches. Lingy, at what stage do you drop your tag? Yeah, well, it gets to a point, to me where you've got to try something else. And uh, if it keeps going this way, uh, I'd be looking for something else. Maybe Del Santo through the middle of the game, middle of the ground. He's done it well a few weeks ago. For the Pies to get back within four points. Jolly is successful. And a nice...
less steadier there for the Pies. St Kilda in the latter parts of this quarter by four points. And that, uh, that is a great bit of play there by Jolly. We've seen him do this so many times, Richard. Just playing the boundary line situation out the Pies, yeah. just centering that ball. I mean, it was a kick in hope, but he positioned himself so well, Jolly, for that quick kick. Did well, Jolly, because big boy McAvoy was off the ground and Cozzy was in the ruck and he's pushed forward and made Cozzy defend and really good work by Darren Jolly. McAvoy's now come back onto the ground. There's Sharrod's there's, tap BT. There's the behind the ear tap, the little Look. star. Now, what on earth value would that be? Look, BT, you don't need to understand it, but things are different these days to when you were a young fella in Mandurah. I've heard it all now. Tats behind the ears. Long ball for the Pies. They're starting to press. Cloak, little left foot one. Little bend. Simpkin got back, tidies up. Dempster now. Cool. Few seconds remaining, and they got out of trouble there, the Saints. This clearance situation now is becoming diabolical for St Kilda. 14-4, the Magpies way. There's a bit of a looseness about the gold tack attempt on Goddard there, but a cracking first quarter of football, full of all that you want as a footy supporter. Close game, two good teams, a lot of toughness about this. Get excited, this is a beauty. St Kilda 4-1-25, lead Collingwood 3-3-21. Some news on Brendan Goddard, Dr Peter Larkins. Yeah, well, Brendan was unlucky just right before the siren. In fact, I think he even pulled out of the contest. He got split open in the head here when Nick Maxwell came over the top of him in that contest. It was a free kick down the field. They had put the headband on him. Just watched Nick come over the top and just collect him. And during the beginning of the quarter time break, Brennan had to go down and get the... Uh, no stitches, Brian, but they've seen they put the old headband on. So luckily he wasn't getting a heavy hit out of that, and uh, he'll be right, because uh, Brennan's been, uh, had worse than that before. A bit of hemorrhoid cream on that, Doc. That'll be the way to go, I reckon. That'll be. They'll get him. They'll stop it, Brian, but uh, probably the hemorrhoid out there. He'll be right. He's just going to sit on the bench for a minute. Uh, nice work. Have a look at that. It's already starting to slip up uh, a bit, and it's not an attractive look for uh, Brendan, as it does slip up to the top. Well, and, uh, I'm not form, forms a crown. No, I'm not sure that too many blokes have been able to wear that tape on their head and actually looked attractive, BT. That's true. That's true. What did you make of it, Lingy? Well, I think we spoke a lot about the amount of ball that Collingwood have been getting through the middle of the ground. Pendlebury, side bottom, Swan, Beams. St Kilda got to get that in check, but the rest of what they've been doing has been very good. Their ball use has been very controlled, very patient, and they look dangerous going forward. So a nice, evenly poised game of footy here. I love the way they controlled the footy. It was only the last five minutes that Collingwood got any semblance of control in it, but they did win around the clearances. That's a concern. If the Saints tidy that up, it's going to be a pretty even contest all night, this one. Beams to Tuvi. The nighttime operator Tuvi. They call him Possum Eyes. You get a look at him, they really glare straight through you. Here's a man there in the bench, uh, sorry, in the coach's box there to the right, Robert Harvey, uh, one of the greatest St Kilda players ever to have played the game. If Swanee's had 5,000 touches, how many did Robert <laughs> Harvey have? He would have had 10,000. Oh, great steal there from Beams. For Solo, 383 games for Robert Harvey. He was an absolute genuine superstar, wasn't he? His doors got it with the big long arms over the shoulder, kicks the first goal of the second quarter. That was another massive win then for Collingwood. I mean, that steal at that stoppage from Dane Beams was just outstanding. That got them in motion. Dempster had already drifted back off the stoppage as well, so they had their extra play behind the ball, and it was just the attack on the ball there from Dawes. And he's kicked a, at least a goal a match in the last four games now, so he's just starting slowly maybe to turn it around, BT. I mean, that's a great solo effort on his behalf. This will be good for his confidence, Chris Dawes. Took a big contested mark just before quarter time. Now a nice goal, controlled the footy beautifully. And Look, he hasn't had his greatest of seasons, but a few nice signs for him tonight. They need to get him up and going for the finals. Ground level look at the centre clearance work there, and this time in favour of the Saints. Oh, Reid got cleaned Ooh. up. But Vantage, Vantage, Vantage. Vantage paid here. Reid will be OK, I think, and Nick Rewalt just checking. And I think he'll rise to his feet as Wellingham. Back inside to Beams. Stay Sometimes I think players stay down too long, Tim, but not in this case. Reed's getting back to his feet now. You're not sure, you know what I mean? Yeah, Thomas. 
along the boundary line. Gets almost within range, unselfishly, over the top, Jolly! He was, Jolly was trying to set up Cloak, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. That, that kick from Dale Thomas, that was absolutely fantastic. Just have a look at this collision again. What courage, oh, 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 no. oh, that's a good hip and shoulder, oh, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, they'll look at it, obviously. He was down was... low, though, Reid, wasn't yeah. he? Oh, he was almost on his knees. Accidental, but we know what happens when you get hit in the head now. But that kick of yeah. Daisy Thomas is at no stage did he try and think about blazing away at goal. He was always looking to come in board, and Jolly timed his run down the fat side beautifully. Second goal on offer here for Jolly. Comes in and stiffs it straight through the middle. Sue Reid there on the bench. I mean, that is a solid bump there that he's caught. It's from uh, Kaziski, and you're right. I mean, anything head high, the match review panel are going to take a very, very close look at. That man on screen now, though, he's doing the job on McAvoy. McAvoy's actually trying to play that Ruckman behind the play. He's pushing forward, trying to make sure that McAvoy then picks him up. And at this stage, he's kicked two goals doing that. So it's been a big win for the Pines. Collingwood by eight points. Doc Larkins. Yeah, Ben Reid, uh, look, at the moment, that was a very heavy hit we just saw. With the, he really gets a forearm into the side of the head, Brian. So they're really checking oh. the, the mini concussion test on him at the moment. He's not well, and obviously it's a head injury. They need to see whether he gets worse over the next minute or so. The timing of that hit had lots of impact about it, didn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure oh what Cos is doing there. He normally takes out one of his own teammates fact, as opposed to... he's lucky to, to get up from that, Reid, having seen that. He's, yeah, that, that was... He's done his really eyes, well. I think his eyes were firmly on Reid then, too. I mean, that's probably going to condemn him so doc uh, if there is a concussion diagnosed here is that it for the game for him absolutely he's looking pretty unwell brian i think they might take him downstairs look at the handball here on to fasolo and fasolo jams it from 45 meters out lovely in close handball from the pies yeah, it's getting out of control in the middle of the ground it's now up to 17 clearances to five. It's all starting in the middle, and Darren Jolly, he's not only giving them a good advantage in the middle, but he's pushing forward. He's taken five marks and some real danger signs. They've got to get control of this, the Saints. There's that hit again. Back down to Doc Larkins. Yeah, they put the ice pack on his head. Uh, he's obviously got swelling over just the, uh, the just below the ear. He doesn't like the ice. You can see it's a bit too cold. But uh, they're just going to check and see whether he develops any more uh, dizziness or any memory problems, and they'll test him more thoroughly, Brian. Yep, so the conservative approach is the go these days to those sort of head injuries. Geary out of the middle. Docks within a metre, having a real good look at that. So we'll update you as we go along. There's an opportunity for Saad out of the pack. Got it deep. Good effort by Cozzy, couldn't quite hold on. Pendlebury, Swan, gee, their handball's really slick. Tim at the moment. Good effort by Heath Shaw, though. He was one out with Justin yeah. Tzitzki in the goal square, and he, he matched him in that one-on-one. -on -one. Well, they are small there, Richo, now, because Reed has yeah. gone off the ground. So, I mean, as soon as the ball hits the ground, I mean, that's a massive win for Collingwood, but it's a tough one when the ball's in the air. He broke even in the aerial contest, Shaw. He's going to do damage at ground level. Swan with a long ball to cloak. He was sitting out the back. He held his opponent under it, got it inside. Oh. Dawes with a funny old fly trap sort of thing. Gold sack now. Through traffic, Geary looking for the give and go. Pierced the middle of two Collingwood players and the composure to kick wasn't quite there. They need that poise coming off half back. Even if they slow it down, at the moment they're playing the pace that Collingwood are forcing them to play. And I don't reckon that was part of their game plan coming into this match. Tuvi to Wellingham with space. Little heavy for Cloak. Over the back, Goldsack in a race here with Simpkin. Did really well, Simpkin. Well, the weight of numbers through the middle of the ground is really starting to tell. Collingwood, Swan and Beams, 16 and 14 possessions each. That's just a whole lot of footy, and that's providing their forwards with a lot of options. It's, it, they, St Kilda have got to stop that. Yeah, we'll get down to Doc in a moment. Doc, did I just see the go-ahead for Reid there? He's on the ground already, Brian, so they've cleared him and he's ready to go. He's back there. Harry O'Brien from 50. That's touched off the boot. No marks. One around the corner. Got the bounce just to the left. So Collingwood starting to open them up a little at 14 points. They're smashing 15 them. now. They're, they're smashing them at the moment. In they... all areas of the ground, they're smashing them. And what they need to do is just slow the game down a little bit, St Kilda. 
for Dane's... They've been rushed in everything they're doing, Richo. Yeah, they certainly are. And Dane Swan, he is up to 17 disposals already. He's on target for another 50. We know he had 50 a few weeks ago. For Solo, went in with just a little lift there and got the hand, brought it down in the end. No harm done. O'Brien, now Blair. Around the corner, doors the target. He's got a giant hand. And was the other one held? Yep. That's when you're undersized. Yep, go through. Time back on. It's all about being undersized, BT. Just watch this again. There's Gwilt probably giving away you know, four or five centimetres plus about six or seven kilos to doors and just trying to stay in that one-on-one -on -one contest. Unable to do that. Grabs his arm. For his second goal of the quarter, he's got a great set shot goal kicking action doors very straight about everything he does and of course when you say that you immediately know that he's going to miss but it did look straight didn't it he kicked it where he aimed it yeah he did his run up is really really straight you're right about that bt steven needs to be good here big boy mcavoy couldn't get there Jolly to Maxwell through traffic, and that is incorrect disposal. Now they just need to be a bit more deliberate with the ball off half back here. Well, Fisher up. running out wide. cosy has got a break on Ben Reed down the ground, but don't think they'll be able to get it to him quick enough. Now Milne's going to try Richo, and he had the mismatch with Shaw, so it was a good result. He, he worked really hard then, Cosy. He led about 60 metres to get to that ball. Put back inside, sort of had a little bit, I'm not sure about it. Maxwell spun in the tackle, side bottom, a pinpoint, fireball handball through traffic. Now Goldsack, stops and props, got hard. All in one motion, the scoop and the handball. Dempster over the top, Jack Stephen confronted by Pendlebury. Really well done by the Bulldog, Stephen. Once again, the kicking by Graham. Oh, gee, did that stamp Nick on the forehead as he went past the ball then? Blair. Back inside. Plenty of space for side bottom. Got Sinclair. Sinclair with space and time to Wellingham if he wants him. The boy with the haircut. Juggling attempt at Mark. Couldn't get it done. McAvoy's tackle didn't stick. Nothing sticking at the moment. Sinclair, soccer. Gee, the pressure must be enormous out there at the moment because that last couple of minutes of football has just been filled with errors on both sides. I mean, players, whether the pressure's real or it's perceived, they haven't been able to hit targets coming off half-back. Live and interactive through the call. By Twitter here, here's Pendlebury. Thomas, a bit of a lock. Took a little poised stand and banged it through. Collingwood with four straight. Great finish by Daisy Thomas. All of the Saints players then were really calling for the touch. They wanted that to be reviewed, to come upstairs and for it to have a look at. But well done. The umpires didn't fall for it. That's been given the all clear. Daisy Thomas kicks his first goal for the night. He's getting involved now with 10 disposals. It's all the big names in the middle are just running all over the top of the Saints now. This is working again from a from a stop. Great hands there by Pendlebury just over the top there. That's the composure and poise, isn't it? Yep. A, a little faint there, and okay, I've got an extra half a second. Just a really clever player around the stoppage. And Lenny Hayes, how good was that? Geary. Armitage attacked it. That's high. Should have been a free. David Armitage. Got the trip in the end. But the first tackle was high. Talked about the stoppages there, 18-8 now, but also scoring from stoppages. Collingwood have scored four goals from stoppages directly as well. Free kick against Milne here. Off the ball it was. Yeah, Milne threw Dane Beams to the ground and they paid it up the ground, reversed the decision. Hey, Lingy, I think you've got what you wanted. We've got Goddard on Pendlebury. We just see in the right of the screen there, top of the frame, Milne threw him to the ground. Yeah, reverse the free kick.
Do you hear that, uh, Lingy, about Pendlebury and Goddard? Yeah, I have noticed they have gone to each other now, which is what I wanted to see. Two quality players playing on each other. Goddard was very damaging in that first quarter through the middle of the ground, but Collingwood getting a heap of the footy in this quarter. I'd love to see Goddard be able to shut Pendlebury down, but still be an attacking option. Reed back on the ground. Montagna stole it, gave it inside to Armitage. Armitage 30, closing. Goal to Saints! Booing is because the Collingwood fans believe that that was a mark to read, if not a free kick to read. He actually outbodied uh, Cozzy in the lead up to that marking duel, and Armitage has been an outstanding player for St Kilda, has led the categories in many of the midfield categories for them this year. So he's one of those midfielders that can often get under your guard, Richo. He's one of the reasons the Saints got a bit of improvement out of that bottom end of their list this year, Armitage. Was so, it or was it not, boys? No, no. good call. Good only, call. only had the two touches on it. You could not pay that as a mark. If you have the third touch, generally they do pay it. Correct decision, well umpired. Back in the middle. Because it's Gitta Hayes who got the last clearance and almost another one to go with it. In fact, it is now successful off the back of the square. Jack Stephen. Kick needs to be really precise. Arm Saad, Ahmed Saab was able to turn his man around, did really well. Got it back into play for Gilbert, who was tackled brilliantly by Seedsman. A lot of good stuff going on out there at the moment. Seedsman again. Free kick, St Kilda, advantage paid. Lenny Hayes gets it long. Here comes Rory Walt. Reed drops in the spot. Goldsack hammers it long. The Fizz or the Faz, or for Solo, missed. The Fizz on that occasion. <laughs> Goddard was a bit lucky there in the middle of the ground. He had to make up a decision very early whether or not he was going to go for it or whether he was just going to hold back. In the end, he went for it and he missed and he overplayed his hand. Tweet off KDN, really happy with how much Tom Simpkin has improved. Love watching him play, says Katie. Back inside for the Pies to get another opportunity. Quilt there with Elliot. Yeah, she's spot on. He's been a real find for the Saints this year. He's probably not going to be key position, but he can play on that third, third tall, and he's had gold sack for periods tonight. Former assistants, both of them, for Collingwood, those coaches. Now Beams, very unselfish centering ball, but Dempster did really well, and some nice help at the back as well from Simpkin. Gee, they've got an advantage, haven't they, when the two Ruckman actually go off the ground and have a spell beat. So that last stoppage, it was doors against Gilbert. I mean, yeah. Gilbert just is so undersized against the big monster. Absolutely. Anyone going to touch that? Keep it alive. St Kilda can get out of jail here. That's a really clever knock-on from Gilbert. Now Montagna retreats, but... They find some space. That kick has to be very, very good. Graham did the best he could with it. Now at ground level, Del Santo, Polo, Ray interception, gold sack, sold some hand candy, and straightened and missed. I don't want to repeat myself, boys, but St Kilda have got to stop overusing the footy on that half forward line there. Just handball after handball, create the turnover, gold sack gets the shot at goal. Both teams at the moment are overusing the handball. It's at about 50% ratio to kicks and handballs, and not many teams go at that sort of ratio. You want to try and kick the football a little bit more than that, Tim. And when they're at their best, Collingwood, with their pressure, and they're on tonight in their pressure, it just means that the ball doesn't move far enough away from the immediate area, and Collingwood just get their numbers, and they just keep pressuring you until they can turn the ball over. And that's what we're seeing across half-back. I don't know why Clint Jones is in the prime spot to receive the little switchback kick. He doesn't like to kick it. No. So you need to get the best kick in yeah. that position. And so often tonight, Jones has been the one that... And he knows he doesn't want to kick it. And I reckon Collingwood are allowing him to be the one too. OK. That's better. Del Santo to Ray. The former dog can go with precision. Milne really should have gobbled that up. He keeps it alive, though. Almost in the Stevie Milne pocket there. 
Had some bad memories in that pocket. Draw breath. Collingwood by 19. Just over eight minutes remaining in the half. Jolly trying to charge over the top of Jack Stephen. Has he made any attempt? Can he make any attempt? Darren Jolly. Darren Jolly. Must make a genuine attempt. Gee, it's hard in that situation. Yeah, I reckon in the last few weeks they've relaxed a little bit on that one where the players are on top of the ball, but... A bit more understanding? Yeah, I think so. I think it's been umpired a lot better the last few weeks. Not Beams' best effort there. Graham told to go. He turns Elliott inside out. Gee, Rewalt did well to not to let that ball pass, believe me. Graham from about 65 hoists the high ball, Shaw. Defensively in the goal square and straight out to Seedsman. Seedsman with a lovely ball to Goldsack. Wants to go inside Goldsack, nothing there. Wellingham's on the angle. Goes long to Cloak, who's got Fisher under the ball. Looking right out to everywhere. On, yeah. Here's Wellingham over the top. Did well, Graham. Poor kick in the end. It was neither nor neither there or there. Gee, they had the Saints I mean. on the transition though, didn't they? They did. There were three Collingwood players just streaming into their attacking 50. Yeah. They had Wellingham, Swan, they were all out, but the kick just didn't have enough carry. That was Travis Cloak's first mark for the night. Nathan Brown, the late inclusion for Chris Tarrant, who was a withdrawal out of this side. Here's Gwilt. Boundary beats them all. It actually looks like Del Santo has now gone to Beam, so... Although it's Montagna that's actually gone and picked him up at this stoppage. got a lot to go to here, Lenny Hayes, that reeled them in really well, the Pies. There's that V-switch again. That's the V-switch. But see, that was too deep. You can't go that deep with it. Pendlebury's going to gobble this up with a kind bounce and over the top. He wanted it back and Elliot went inside to read back to Elliot. No one to give it to. Counter-attack opportunity. The Saints can't score to their shore. Close the ground down quickly on Gilbert. Montagna. Ground level couldn't get it done. Shaw now on the counter. The sizzling ball inside 50. Well done, Lenny Hayes. See, that was great defensive play by Beams, though. He's matched up with Montagna, and he ran so hard defensively. He actually helped turn the ball over for Collingwood. They are out then, the Saints. Graham to Gilbert. Gilbert can go wide, got two. Big boy will do well to get this on to Del Sando. Handball wasn't great. Look at that. Precision through them, had to take him on. Del Sando needed his left. Big boy McAvoy tidying up. Jones put a bit of uppish in that handball to allow Montagna some time. But look at Collingwood pressing, 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 pushing, pushing, pushing. Backwards, backwards. Reed! Has he recovered? <laughs> I don't think he's teammate. killed his own man in the back of the head. Darren, Darren Jolly. Jolly. Oh, oh. Darren, this is all about me and the mark, not about you. Oh, boy. That flushed him, didn't it? <laughs> that was forward whiplash. <laughs> Thomas to side bottom. Jolly's going to come off the ground as a result. More for recovery, recovery than anything. Here's Cloak, one-on-one. -on -one. Starting to find it in the air a bit over the last couple of weeks. There is Jolly. Yeah, that's the uh, Travis Cloak of last year. Just a really strong contested one grab mark. And the distance is no problem for him from here. And there's the read attempt as well. That's the full knee in the back of the scone. Cloak from 50 metres out. Kick on the way is absolutely mad. Well, you called it beautifully, BT. I reckon he really likes that distance when you're about 50 metres out as a 
boards. You have to kick through the footy. You have no other choice but to kick through it naturally. You're not in two minds whether to stab at the ball or kick through it like you can be 25 to 30 out and just kick that absolutely beautifully. And a nice contested mark. You can see a little bit of confidence starting to build in him. Collingwood by 25. Doc Larkin's on the bench. Yeah, well, Darren Jolly, he's got his uh, skull split open by Ben Reed. He was probably going to get his own back on somebody, not a teammate. Uh, so they're just trying to get that blood, stop the flowing, Brian. He might come back with a headband. Out of the middle. Armitage around the corner. Harry O'Brien was brave. Henry Bree. Armitage. What a pressure from Collingwood. Fantastic. Harry O'Brien, Wellingham couldn't quite get down enough. The recovery, Jack in the box like, got it on the doors. Here's a thrashing kick, but he didn't uh, get that the way he'd hoped. That's a great mark, though, too. I mean, that ball was bobbling all over the place. But what about their pressure, BT, across yeah. half-back? They turned the ball over, and then they spread so quickly, Colin. What are the tackles here tonight, Tim? It doesn't seem to have been a big tackling game, but just the more inferred pressure that you talk yeah. about. Now, here is Swan. Again, they turn it over. Side bottom, Jones, and really just trying to wait for the troops there, side bottom. Did well. There's some new ink work on Dane's left leg, and Jolly has recovered and ready to go. Had 19 hit outs, too. He's been the dominant ruckman on the ground tonight, Jolly. McAvoy. Wellingham doing well again in this game. Jack Stephen back to Graham. They have to be composed here. Oh, the one-arm tackle by Fasolo gave Ray no hope. The perfect tackle. Well, that is the chicken wing tackle. That's grabbing the arm, locking it down. There's Back nothing he could do. Fasolo, cloak in the middle. 26-point margin. Have a look at this again, BT. Just grabs hold of that arm. He saw him about down. to handle, yep. didn't he? And he said, mate, you won't be able to do that with one, so I'll put the cuffs on you. That's what the modern player is taught to do. Just grab a lever and hang on to it. Gee, they've been dominant in the second quarter of football, Collingwood. Their 13th game at the MCG this year, the Pies. They've won eight of them, lost four. St Kilda's third game. They're one and one at the moment. Sinclair. Plenty of speed. Kick around the corner for Solos. Normally a smooth operator. Tuvi. Thomas some room. He gets a look from 50. BT, what is he doing there? What's he trying to do kicking a boomerang or a... Was that a boomerang? Side? He tried to kick a check side kick. Yeah. Almost direct. Watch this again. He lays the ball across he his boot. He does too. Just maybe not facing the goal he wanted to, but that's a drop punt, isn't it? Yeah, he, every maybe day he didn't the feel world. he had the extra metre to straighten. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, but, you know, he's, he's square onto the goal. Gee, I'll tell you what, he's come back into the great game since uh, Cosy knocked him out, hasn't he? <laughs> he has indeed. Here's Cloak. Off hands. He's looking more and more like he's going to get involved. A brilliant smother. Cloak recovers. Wellingham, the tackle by Big Boy was good. Del Sano, hot in there now. Got out, had it knocked out on the tackle. So that's a no free call. Wellingham, Harry O'Brien, Penderbury on his wrong right side. Gave it to Dawes and now Sinclair. Well, that's Collingwood at their best. When they press up like they just did then and they made it impossible for the Saints to escape. And now they get their reward, a shot at goal. 127 remaining in the half. Sinclair to extend the margin from just beyond 50. That's offline. Saints need a goal so desperately before half time. And Paul was right, Saints need to compose themselves when they move the ball forward into their forward 50. And that's exactly what they've lost in this first half of football. Scotty Waters on screen there. He's got a lot of work to do at half time. Quilt. On. On. Yeah. McAvoy. Well done, Del Sando. Rewalt puts Gilbert into space. But look at Reed coming around to make it a two on one. So they've got it in the right position with just under a minute remaining here, the Saints. How early, how early then did Reed though, come off his man? He yeah. sensed what was going on. He was going to outnumber St Kilda at the fall of the ball. And that's just really good defensive play. It's a brave thing to do to leave your man. Yep. 
timing's got to be perfect, otherwise you can look very silly. Side bottom. And still time here for the Saints. They still haven't been able to fix that problem with clearances too. It's up to 24-11 now. I mean, that's just a total domination for Collingwood. And that's where the game is beginning for them. Jolly. Armitage. Got the numbers here, the Saints. There's time. 35 seconds. Lenny gets a look from 60. Rewald on the lead. Runner needs to get out to him straight away. And he hasn't. Now the St Kilda runner has gone past him. So let's, let's uh, hope that Nick understands the moment here. 15 seconds left in the half. Rewalt, 45 metres out, needs to come back right. And it will not. He was out. I mean, the question is, was the ball out? Boundary umpire in perfect position. All of it has to be out as well, not just part of it. Very impressive, the Saints in the first quarter. The Pies, very impressive in the second quarter. Collingwood at halftime by 27. Very, very good game. And the Collingwood players converging to congratulate each other on a good half. And they need to go and readjust things, the Saints, because they did appear, Tim, to have it right very, very early. Let's get down to Lingy. Well, Maxie, it fe felt like then that the pressure you guys were applying were really testing the Saints and crowding some turnovers and kicking goals, wasn't it? Yeah, they jumped us early and we weren't ready at the start. Um, their intensity was way in front of what ours was. So we worked back in the second half of the first quarter and then started to get a little bit more intense in that second quarter to what we need. Just behind us, the group's just been called in by Heath Shaw. What are the key messages that he would be reinforcing? Just play a bit smarter. I think at times we've fallen into, uh, I guess, the way they want to play by bombing it long. Obviously, fishing those guys drop off and read the ball well. So just got to make sure we use it well going forward. Thanks for your time, Maxie. Nice work, Nick Maxwell, the skipper of the pie. That's Lingy out in the ground. Let's go into the rooms. They're, they're coming down Richo's way now. Richo. Yeah, down here in the Saints rooms, just waiting for the boys to come here. I reckon they'll be thinking that the start of that game, we had it under control with uncontested marks. We were controlling the tempo of the play. We were getting the ball forward. Goddard was getting the ball, putting it inside 50, and they were really in the game. But as that second half wore on, it really got out of control on the clearances, and it was Dane Swan and Dane Beans, and their premier midfielders really got a hold of the ball around the clearances, and the Saints just couldn't get it back off them from that point on. And it's really about coming in here now the boys are just walking in there's Nick Grewalt and, and Cozzy they just need to have a good look at what they're doing around the clearances just they need to get that under control and if they can more. start getting some tempo into the game again there'll be a big chance we've just got big Ben McAvoy here how are you saying it Ben? Yeah it's pretty tough out there they've been um their pressure's been awesome um you see they've turned over on us a bit with um yeah struggling to get out so credit to them um but uh yeah, we've got some work to do we'll kick back this second half I guess you'll be talking about the clearances. They really have uh, got it out of control in there at the moment. Yeah, they've been exceptional in there. Um, so we're going to reset and um, yeah, probably get to a bike to starting points and um, yeah, go from there. Jolly seems to be using a tactic of really trying to push forward and make you accountable to defend. Yeah, absolutely. He's always been good at that. And um, it's been pretty tough. Not, a lot of, not enough pressure when they're going inside 50, so it's been tough. Thanks, Ben. No worries. Oh, boy. Big boy McAvoy down there with another big boy in Matthew Richardson. Half time here. We have got a cracker. Do not go away on the other side of the break. We sum this up. A big report on Andrew Cracker and how he went in the VFL today after a Rico. Five months out of the game. Half time. Collingwood 8 11 59. Lead the Saints 5 2 32. That is nicely suited to the G. Magnificent night in Melbourne for those around Australia. And we're looking forward to a big, big second half here. Can't wait for this one to get underway. Collingwood by 27. You can see Jolly has been instrumental. Swan with his normal almost 20 possessions in the half. And Saad with two. Dempster's getting plenty of it as well. As we're about to get underway here, boys, in this uh, second half of football, what do the Saints need to do, Tim? Well, they're going to get a couple of their star-type players into the game for one. Milne's only had the six disposals in that first half. He's been out in the ground 87% of the time. So, And Cozzy's had uh, two disposals, one in each quarter. He's been out there 78% of the time. And Swan and Beams, I mean, they really have to reduce their effectiveness in this second half if there's any chance to win. 
Swan's up to 19 now, and Beams is up to 17 possessions. So, and Sidebottom's chimed in with 18. So you look at Swan, Sidebottom, Beams, and Penelbury, they just had too much of the ball. Milne not getting so much of it at the moment. Little on the cold side, just the uh, six touches of the footy. No goals yet for him, and that's what he does best. And Cozzy as well at the other end, uh, lean, uh, Richo, has been a little lean. So uh, you can see Cozzy there with just the couple of touches so far in this game. Ready to start the second half for football. Collingwood by 27 points. St Kilda need a cracking third quarter. Good start towards the punt road end. Shaw and Beams attempting to combine here. Simpkin needed to get a little bit more intensity there. Fast hands, good play for Saints. Here's Saad, the man that lives in a garage. Goes inside 50. Milne's got Tuvi under the ball. Can he get a clean bounce? Yes, he can. The little outside kick as well. That is the started that St Kilda need. That was just the perfect kick then to BT. It was at the right height there for Milne to be able to push Tuvi under the ball. I mean, he didn't do anything illegal. There was no free kick involved. He was able to edge him under the ball using his body, and that's what he does so well, Stevie Milne. And for him to be able to get into this game, it just provides enormous energy for their overall efforts, St Kilda. And good work by Montagna on the central wing position there just to get that handball out. And we haven't seen many positive flow-on bits of play from St Kilda in that first half. That's one of their better passages of play so far. Just pointing out the fact that he hadn't kicked a goal. And on cue... Milne gets the Saints back in the hunt. Swan. High handball to Thomas. Handled it brilliantly. So much time with the footy. Here's the skipper. Sends in the old gyrocopter spin-like thing. How good was that centre clearance you had? Dame Beams involved. Gave it across to Swan. Gave it across to Thomas. Then to Pendlebury. All of their four guns all got involved and... That's why they're so hard to stop at the moment around the clearances. Swan already busy. Turned over his 5,000th touch in the first quarter here today. Career touch. Here's Beams, left foot, great control. Collingwood get one back. Well, he's a... Uh... Freak at the moment, this man, Dane Beams. 20 disposals now. That's his first goal for the night. He's hitting the scoreboard every single week. They've kicked nine goals now. They've had eight individual goal kickers. And that's why they're such a hard team to beat. You can stop one, but everyone contributes on the scoreboard. And that's why this team has been up for so long, Timmy. And he's been spending a lot of time with Rob Harvey, too, just learning about work that's ethic. Okay. Watch this again. I mean, it's the pressure that's applied. There's a tackle, the first tackle. Really clever handball into space. And we have already seen in recent weeks what a wonderful finish of Beams is. Yeah, Elliot's tackle disposed the football from Dempster's hands and just well finished off by Dane Beams. Elliot trying to burrow a hole out of there and Kevin Goddard was hopping about. Hayes with a clearing kick to the advantage of Sard. He got a shocking bounce and now three on one Collingwood's way and Wellingham had a hand in that last goal and here he is again and Graham long handball Dempster looking for Hayes inside takes him on gee that was good play from Lenny now the smooth moving Del Santo launches one low Del Santo with his second goal what a difference it makes when your better players get involved in a passage of play and Lenny Hayes you just know that Lenny's going to lift his game to a new level and Del Santo then just the wonderful smooth mover as BT said in the call and that is just a classical finish. There's never been a more apt nickname for a player than the smooth mover, Nick Del Santo. He just glides across the turf and just stabbed at that ball from 50 and he knew the moment it came off his boot it was going to go through for a goal. Goddard involved in that passage yeah. of play too and you just know St Kilda are to make... Any inroads in the second half, those big name star type players have to really get heavily Absolutely. involved. Lee Montagna's the one as well. I think he's the player in the last month who's really 
lifted his work rate, and when he's getting the footy, he's that 100 metre player that you need. He can run and carry with the footy. Great bounce by Barr gets there, went up and came down on the inner, inside the inner circle. You rate yourself as a bit of a smooth mover too, BT, at times. Yeah, well, I guess I do. <laughs> Got hard out the back. <laughs> Mark, oh, Stick the boots in now, Richo. What's, where's the line on that? <laughs> Here's the garage man. Got it to Milne. Milne around the corner. Needs a good bounce. Over the top. Rewald. Can he get back to ball? Boy, didn't that oh, mind a little bit. I think he's still got it. He has. He must get nightmares, Nick Rewald, when he gets the ball at that position of the ground <laughs> yeah. against Collingwood. Because we know that uh, there was that brilliant smother in the grand final by Heath Shaw when he was on the goal line. He thought he was going to kick a goal unopposed. In that exact spot. Almost that exact same spot. But on that occasion, the ball didn't dribble over the line. He was able just to tap it back in play and an opportunist goal to start. They're still alive. I mean, there's a lot of energy about their performance in this second half, Richo. Have a look at this. The spot almost that Nick Rewalt doesn't like to venture into, Gee. of course, Heath Shaw got him. How smart was that, though? He, he knew that he couldn't get boot to ball without tapping it out in front. He did it really well. That was a really good goal, too, was his boot. Clearance to go with it, so the Saints are all of a sudden back within 15. There he is, out the side door. Gilbert Milne has a really good size-up opportunity here to lift the lid open on this game. Milne's got two in the quarter. Three in a row for the Saints. Back within nine. He's such a barometer about this team, isn't he? Like, he's already kicked that earlier goal, and he gets up, his energy level's raised, and it's almost as so, as though it spreads through the team, and Nathan Buckley there just looking on, uh, not happy with the way that his team started this second half. Stevie Milne had a really good look at this. This is a man that's only four goals behind John Coleman now, Richo. Well, Matthew Pavlich passed John Coleman today. John Coleman did it in about 90 games, but they're just starting to get some work done in the middle here. Four clearances to two this quarter for the Saints. Has not been goalless this oh. year, Milne. How about the attack on the ball from oh. Geary? And I tell you what, I reckon that's a bad, bad ankle. Gee, that's that's so the one, isn't it? When you slide onto the football and someone's legs are in the way. Well, no, there's look, a lot of controversy about sliding early in the ooh, season. That wasn't a slide. That was no, a dive that was, in no. desperation. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you on that, but, I mean, we haven't heard about a slide for a long time. But players adapt, I reckon, don't they, pretty quickly. Look at Rewalt. Just had a bit of trouble getting the flow of the ball there. But I tell you what, the Saints are pressing. They're within a goal and a half. And let's get down to Doc Larkins. Yeah, I just got a feeling he gets hit in the fibula bone just on the side of the calf. Bone. Oh, you're so, right. Yeah, but there's a bit of left medial in it as well on the left knee. So he's got the contact over the, the side of the leg and then a bit of medial. They take him downstairs and they'll check both. That would be a disaster, Doc. It certainly had those particular looks about it. St Kilda have risen to another level here. He didn't dive on, he's picking up the footy. Richo, he's got nothing to worry about, has he, Geary? I think his eyes are on the, the football. Ball. He attacked the football. He didn't slide into it, as BT said. He sort of tumbled over. It's yeah. more fell over the ball. You're entitled to go and win the ball. Yeah, you've got to win the footy. Absolutely. Accidents are going to happen in this game. We can't get too concerned every single time. Tuvi out the back door. Fast hands. Side bottom Thomas looking for the give and go. Didn't get it back from the Faz or the Fizz for Solo. Goes inside. Free kick, Collingwood swan. One they didn't need to give away. Hold, says Luke Farmer. Didn't want to have a discussion there. Oh, yeah, they de definitely held him. You know what that is? That, I reckon that's just a champion player of the game, Brownlow medalist, and a young player who probably gets a little bit intimidated on the, the player that he's playing on because there's just no need for Simpkin to hold on to Dane then. Swan directly in front. Cruises in, launches a drop punt, and it goes wide, so... The Saints would be wrapped with that result. And you're in front, Collingwood, but you actually do need a bit of a steer. The Saints are coming at them, so 
I mean, in the context of what's going on out there at the moment, that's a bad miss. 4-4 four, four from set shots. No eyes for the ball, Dane. It's a really tight one among Cod. Not no. one mark this quarter from either team at the moment. Here's an opportunity for Shaw, but Big Boy got back in there and made it really difficult for Swan. That just means that it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. Every player is manned up and no one can find any space to take a mark. Here's that last hit from uh, Kaczynski involved again. Oh, you, you called it earlier, damage. Timmy. Go, Lingy. You called it earlier, Timmy, that he usually takes out his own teammates rather than the opponents. True to form. Now, has Wellingham made a good enough attempt there for the umpire? He says no. Must make a genuine attempt. Let him up. Let him up. Must, Must make, make a genuine, genuine attempt. attempt. Wow. I thought he did. Oh, that's a good kick. Gee, that's a good kick. Milne. Little gifty kick out the back was gobbled up by Harry. Absorbing some heat there was Harry. For Solo that don't argue on Dempster, get out of my way. On the fizz. Little ball in low, Blair. G uses his ball well for a young player, doesn't he? He just thought his way through that coming down the wing then. He had a couple of options. Has he got the distance from here, BT? Oh, just Richo, the boy from one Thaggy. Heath Shaw. I came past there looking Let's for it shot, thanks, went Jim. down with him to one thaggy a week or two back for the opening of bunnings down there and he drew the whole of one thaggy you would have to the opening of that store you would have backed the truck in and unbelievably a couple of freebies i reckon v2 yes he did blair long ball richo let's get down to doc larkins on the boundary yeah goldsack's still down uh, brian but the mist is coming up to the bench it looks to me like he may be done for the night uh, with that uh, incident from a couple of minutes ago at the left knee and shin region all right doc if you Get any more info on that, let us know, because that is a big one. Here's the boy who lives in the garage, Armand Saad. We believe he sent, sleeps on the upper deck of the bench near the vice in Grant Thomas's garage. He doesn't go to the bench when he gets injured either. They just put him up on the hoist. No roller door there either. It's the old wooden gate open style thing. It's down in Brighton, isn't it? It wouldn't... Got an outside dunny as well. It'd be like a house down in Brighton's uh, Tomo's well, garage. Right. Don't worry about that. Here's Shaw. Got a tweet from Daniel Connors here, my old teammate. Talking of hair, he say, says he's loving Swanee's hair, BT. Oh, nice work. Look at that kick back in there. Boy, is that dangerous from Thomas. Jolly did well. Harry O'Brien just a little iffy here at the moment. Seedsman kick back inside to Sinclair. A little fiddle, a faddle, and eventually the fumble. Got an opening opportunity. Doors to Pendlebury. Pendlebury with a Bit of a headstand from Swan. Couldn't quite make it work. Back to you, Doc, on the boundary line. Yeah, sub has, has taken place already, so we're going to see that uh, it'll be that uh, Tom Young comes in. Gold sack gone for the night, Brian. OK, Doc, and you're thinking maybe medial? A medial, medial of the left knee, Brian, yep. Back inside to McAvoy here. And outside with a handball to Jack Stephen. Look at this, he takes Wellingham on. Puts it on the deck as well. That's confidence for a guy that stuffed up the last one. Goes inside, Miss Cozzy. Oh, that ball had to come to ground. I mean, Cozzy had to make an impact on that contest. 150, Jack. 150, thank you. Just looking at the other end of the ground too, uh, Buckley's actually put Swanee to full forward. And the last time they came forward, the Pies, he was one-on-one -on -one with Dempster inside the 50 arc. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be the most nervous position you can find yourself in modern-day football. Here's possum eyes, Tuvi. He should be dangerous up for Timmy because he's got such a good burst of speed. He's had a 50 metre lead here and they've ignored him. How's that for running for Swan? That's why he gets the ball more than most. But it's opened up the 50 for the other boys. Great look at the openness, Richard, that you talk about. Doors. Farron Ray did well. He was undersized in that contest and he brought it to ground. Coaches love that sort of stuff, BT. Dane Swan led 60 metres flat out, didn't get used, it was an unrewarded lead, but it opens up the space for the rest of the forward line and he'd be wrapped with that, Nathan Buckley. Pendlebury almost got through, Simpkin, the tackler there, ball pinned, and has he made a genuine attempt? He's in trouble. That was a really good tackle there by Simpkin, because everybody knows that Pendlebury is a master at able for getting his hands free in a tackle, and he can be still so dangerous even when he's standing up in a tackle like that. The, army's, great play. the army just starting to get up out of yep. their seats because they're getting a little anxious here. Just 11 points in their favour at the moment. Fisher. 
Has he hurt his shoulder? Let's hope not. No. They might have got an old-fashioned rocket at halftime, the Saints. They're playing completely different football than what they played in the and first half. The footy. Boy, are they having a crack now. Stephen, been exhilarating through the corridor. No. Kick wasn't great. Maxwell got Sinclair on immediately if he wants, or the longer option in doors. Sinclair it is. He goes very wide to Blair, the boy from one faggy. Well done, Geary, in my book. Thought it would have got a free for a, a professional free, but he did well to get it over the boundary. Geez, the crowd is coming alive now. Look at their pie supporters. Well, they don't like it. They can feral up like no other, Richo. <laughs> Oh, they certainly can. And yeah. look at this last one. Is this a free or not? Front here, Luke. No, not really, was it? Oh, I don't think so. See, the clearances have swung around this quarter too. Ninth oh, through St Kilda's way. But whoever's winning the clearances in this game is having the men all the momentum go their way. Will tuck the head down and said, I'm in and under, and Swan, you cannot get under me. Got a feeling about this game, Tim, and uh, I just think there's not going to be much in it come the end. Well, the Saints are really are playing to stay alive for September. Yep, yep. They're losing they're everything. Two games out of the eight. Yeah, going to make it really tough for them. I that's think that's better. right. That's better play by Steve. Yeah, it was really good. Jones sliding to Saad. Saad a belting ball in the Milne direction. Harry O'Brien went to ground. Milne, he loves this. Little kick along the grounds. Didn't work out there, but great call, Timmy Watson. They, Jack Stephen was smart enough to use the short kick and not just blaze away. Got the ball into Stevie Milne in a one-on-one -on -one dangerous situation. Nearly ended with a goal. That's what St Kilda got to do. Have the composure going forward. Harry O'Brien is gone looking for Sinclair and Gilbert was there and he did really well. High tackle, let's get back down to Doc. Doc Larkins. Yeah, the Saints have activated their sub as well, uh, Brian, so they've just uh, got the green vest off um, and so we'll get to see in the game that uh, Sam Donnell will come in. Sam Donnell goes in forward to Fasolo over the top. Opportunity here for Gould, he went to ground, which is not a good thing at that end of the ground. Dempster will do well. Well done. So the Saints have activated their sub. Donnell, who's been the sub for his four games so far, and the Collingwood people are now starting to come to the perimeter piping and just get absorbed in the game. Boy, they're passionate. Pendlebury. Who got subbed out down there, Lingy? Uh, it's Dean Polo, Richo, has been subbed off the ground for the Saints. And Donnell's been really good too, he's coming on as his sub. Uh, he's been able to get himself involved in the game really quickly and provide even more energy and run for the Saints. Tweet here from Robbie W. How many Gippsland Power Boys are playing tonight? Well, the answer is eight, four in each team, Robbie. It's a factory, Brian. No, it's not. You've got to do it over a long period of time. <laughs> Ball over the line, out of bounds. We'll throw it in so we can all draw breath. Collingwood by 11. And How many factories TV. are out there, BT? How many? How many factories? Lots, lots of factories out there. Falcons, just to name one, Jack Stephen, who's in form at the moment. Oh, bang, there's a Falcon. And the Mickey Turner footy factory. <laughs> there he is. An opportunity as he belts through there. Denell, the sub that's been activated. Rewalt couldn't get down to that. Now Brown. High ball, G side bottom's going to get swamped here. Oh, now absolutely all over him. Surely a free there, nothing. Side bottom did well to keep his feet and poise. Back into Sinclair. Sinclair goes long. Here comes Cloak and Ray. Well done. Farron Ray, you star. Their defence is holding up really well. There's been some one on ones. Dempster, Gwilt, Ray coming back to help them. They're undersized as a defence, but they're holding up well. Montagna. Milne the target. Harry O. Now he wants to go. Long ball back. And the mark taken by Young, the sub, who's also been activated. Farron Ray dropping into the slot again. That's courageous to be able to fill that hole too for Farron Ray. And it's a place you don't want to be out there in the, on the field when you can't see what's coming. In the opposite direction, he's got to fall back into the hole. He's got to line himself up with where the ball's coming from. And he's done that without even flinching. Well, he was a late inclusion tonight, Farron Ray. And 
He hasn't been a favourite of Scotty Waters yeah. this year. He's playing like he knows he's got to earn that spot and terrific work. <sighs> that wasn't the intended objective of that kick. Trying to strip it out of there was Elliot. Trevi to Dawes. Kept it alive here, Maxwell. Sinclair tried the slide in win, it didn't work. Graham, a little low ball. Saad, for his third goal, off the ground. Rewalk touch. Oh, they'll be disappointed there. They have two players in the goal square, the Saints. Collingwood by 10. Seedsman who ran into a tackle now. Is that a genuine attempt? Umpire said no prior and genuine. Oh, well done. Got a lot of here, that, that kick from Dane Swan, that inboard kick to a, almost a 50 50. Don't see that a lot from Collingwood. They generally go down the line in that situation. Penderbury again doing the ruck work there. This third quarter has been played at real pace. I was just watching the number of players that were bent over with their hands on their hips, BT. There's a lot of players out there just taking in the deep breaths at the moment. For such a fast game, we're not seeing a lot of goals. That means both defences are just holding up well, the half-back lines. Del Santo slicing through off the advantage. Well, they're out over the other side here. Rewalt to Saad. Cosie's out, isn't he? Saad can draw it inside. Tuvi got back there offhand. Here's Clint Jones, an unlikely goal. And very unlikely, and his teammate in the goal square in Armitage says, What about me? Clint, when you, when you don't kick a lot and you smell one, you <laughs> gotta have it. You gotta nail it. You gotta have it. Oh, you're right. It's like an alluring taste. They're not over yet, though. The Saints are still attacking. Tuvi. Along the boundary. Well done by McAvoy. McAvoy. There's the Jones reaction after the miss, and Graham says, Oh boy. Yeah, Chase, we know how good a kick Graham is. And that despair turned to a clap. No, that Graham. was that was good. He held his emotions in check then. Could have could have sprayed him really. <laughs> Some players would. Well, you'd know about that, Richo. Oh, Brian. Have you ever seen yourself on YouTube? <laughs> Carrying on like a pork chop. Not the back door to Geary. Geary, now look at this. Some room. Armitage needs to be just a little quicker if he possibly could. Graham gets a look. He's a big kick, not beyond him. Jolly's got one coming over the top. Del Sano couldn't make that work. Jolly did well. Milne's given away the free. Let's have a listen to this. That's reckless, Stevie. Boys, to me, that's the sliding rule that they're trying to outlaw. That's very dangerous there, going in with no, knees no, and feet no, first. No, 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 I'll play the free kick. I'll play the free kick. Oh, shut, shut, no. Yeah, quiet. No, okay, enough of that language. Hey, hey, enough of the language. Darren, how are you going? Okay, that's fine. Just wait. What are you going to do, fuckhead? What are you going to do? I mean, the umpire said then that that was reckless. We'll certainly have a look at it later in the week as well. Stevie Mill doesn't want to undo any of his good work early in this quarter. You know what's from about that's not on that language. Harry, we'll deal with it, Harry. Hey. Oh, Harry, Harry. Yes, I'm a... I reckon the language was directed at O'Brien, not the umpire. And if markets can't handle that directed at players, then. <laughs> Boy. Harry O'Brien. The ultimate insult there as he gets around Milne and drives the ball forward. Three deep, Del Sano, Armitage off the back. St Kilda just nine points adrift here at the moment. A four goal to one quarter in their favour. Here comes Collingwood and Tuvi. Wellingham sets himself. Great mark, Armitage, or Dempster is it? That, that is the man that Mick Moldhouse identified in the pre-game show as being one of the best intercept marks in the competition. Dempster. Number three in the competition, Dempster. 
And he's doing it again tonight. You've been watching the minute with Mick. He, go, he doesn't miss much, Mick, I tell you. There's a see-through board, so yes. the camera can get him from the other side. Here's a jolly. M insisted that we got that board for him, Mick did. He did, loves the see-through board. Here's Reed. Long ball, Cloak sets himself, got a bit of couple. Geary had to get rid of it almost, Jackie Chan style. Oh, I like the work of Stephen Delaney. Lenny Hayes, ripper kick up the guts. A little firm there. Now St Kilda can go to Montagna. Will Rewald come at him? He does. He takes Shaw on. Shaw's got to be good, and he is. It was uh, Jones, in fact, not Rewald. Donnell's been busy since he came onto the ground. He's had four touches already. And Jones is really doing a defensive type job there, but he's got to be able to draw the ball one on one. He's sure it's very difficult to beat. Charlie took it out of the ruck, had a second bite at it, and now Goddard sends it along the ground for a behind. Got a tweet from Cam Rose, and I reckon it sums up the game at the moment. Both sides are wasting the final kick inside 50. They seem to be both panicking. The game's just from one end to the other, but no one can take a mark inside 50. It's taking nothing away from the defences of each side, though. Shaw on the head of Brown. They queue up from left, right and centre. Montagna threw it out the back door. Umpire was unsighted, couldn't see it, fair enough. Graham goes back in to Goddard. He could just about go the distance at his best. Goddard sees McAvoy in the mismatch with Sinclair. That is such intelligent play. Uh, to see that mismatch was just incredible. I thought he was going to wind up there outside 50 and have a ping at it because he's got a big leg on him, Richard. But, I mean, B2, he caught it beautifully. The fat side of the ground, the open space on the other side of the ground. McAvoy knowing that he had the mismatch here and he just positioned the ball beautifully. And Jolly did that earlier in the game on McAvoy. I love seeing the Ruckman push down that yep. fat side of the ground and take marks. And if Goddard was the man to have that inside 50 kick, no one's been able to hit a target. First time he gets it, he hits a target. Big boy, bit of a prehistoric look about. That is absolutely magnificent. Big boys kicked it for the Saints. They're within two. <laughs> it's, it's nothing for his story. He may he may move got a little like a glacier at times, but there's nothing for his story about him. What is he, a brontosaurus? Are they brontosaurus? Is it? Is it Tyrannosaurus Rex? A little bit of uh, slow mover about him. <laughs> Look at Bucks there. He's got uh, he's got some worries now. I mean, uh, the Saints are within two uh, two points, and they've really just taken control of this game this third quarter. Well, Collingwood haven't kicked more than ten goals. St Kilda haven't kicked more than ten goals a game against Collingwood in their past six matches, and they're already ten, and we're not at three quarter time. So, scoring more here, the Saints. They are back within two points. Dempster again. Pick that if you can. Montagna, Dawes, little handball in there to Young, taken away by Lenny Hayes. Goddard stops, props, has a really good look, goes wide. Graham can hit Jones. Jones had to wait and saw pounced on him. Chick Goddard's, he's been the man that's lifted them. He, he knows the season's on the line, one of their most experienced players. 13 clearances to six this quarter. Goddard's had three of them. He's had 10 touches. He's trying to lift his side. He wants to play in September. Gee, he sure is a good player, isn't he? He's a fantastic player. And, you know, what Jones is trying to do at the moment is actually draw the ball. But he's got great closing speed, he sure. Let him go. A huge 90 seconds coming up here. Collingwood by two points. Less than that now. St Kilda steal one here. And I tell you what, the reverberations around this concrete jungle that is the MCG might even see a few Pies fans start to walk the terrace tip. God help us. Rewalt goes high and long. Cozzy hasn't taken one all night. Got vice-like hands on this occasion. Despite the mini tunnel. So important then, boys, that Ben McAvoy was able to draw the ball outside 50, which brought Jolly to him. 
It allowed Goddard then to get the ball into Kaczynski without Jolly dropping back into the hole and gave him a free run of the ball and a fantastic grab. That is a really, really top-class mark. 80% set shot kicker he is, Cozzy. This in the closing moments of the third quarter to put St Kilda in front. Listen to the roar if he is successful. Got it. Saints by four have had a six goal to one quarter over the pies. Gee, that was a strong mark from Cozzy. He got a good run up out of it. He could jump. He launched. He used all of his height to his advantage and clunked it. And we know he's a great mark. He just hasn't been able to do it enough. But perfect kick in. Great kick. 15 to 20 metres out. It gave him enough room to get a run up. And when you can launch like this as a key forward, that's what you want. And he took it beautifully. And, gee, there's a lot to play for for both sides here. The Saints, obviously, to stay alive. Buck's not looking too happy. Disgusted. And it's, I reckon he'll be talking about the clearance situation, just like Scotty Waters would have been at halftime. Five consecutive St Kilda goals. 15 seconds remaining. Time for them to get another if they want. This needs to be a mark. Eight seconds. Brown. Pies win. They go into second spot tonight, so it's on for both teams. Boy, oh boy, wow we Doesn't he look rather agitated? The Saints, unbelievable third quarter. They lead it by four. 11-6, 72 to Collingwood, 9-14-68. play for at the start of this game. Rewald got the Saints off to a fast one. They kicked consecutive goals to start the game. They led by 13. The smooth moving Del Sano in the first quarter made sure the lead was capitalised. Dawes started to work himself back into the game. First of second. Reed was KO'd but then came back on the ground and was simply superb in that second quarter as you can see with a big big mark. Milne First goal of the last quarter, put them within 20 of the third quarter, I'm sorry, put them within 21 points. Beams responded immediately. Collingwood by 27 points, two minute mark third quarter to finish off with seconds remaining in the third quarter. Cozzy pulls down a ripper and all of a sudden, St Kilda at three quarter time lead by four points. So three-quarter time scores, St Kilda 11-6-72, Collingwood 9-14-68. Cameron Ling. Yes, BT, he's mentioned four points of difference. Both coaches called their players into really tight huddles. They were both animated at that three-quarter time break. They both know how important this game is. Collingwood playing for a top two spot, home final, St Kilda for a top eight. This is going to be an absolutely cracking last quarter. Indeed it is, and there's so much to play for. And uh, Shane Warren just on Twitter at the moment. Come on, Saints. He's watching it on his iPad over there in Leeds in the UK and totally immersed in this game. And you can only wonder what Nathan Buckley may have said to his troops at three-quarter time. Just look at the live ladder. And there's a lot to play for, oh, isn't there? There's so much to play for. Well, you see, if the Pies win, they'll jump up above Adelaide and the Hawks into second position tonight. Adelaide can go to second if they win against your old mob, the Bombers, tomorrow. And the Saints... They win and they stay in touch with Frio and Essendon. And they've got a very good percentage too, St Kilda. So a lot riding on this last quarter. Stay with us. The great game of Aussie rules. Four points about to be showcased in this last quarter. Way better than the 10 metre air rifle. Back in the middle. <laughs> McAvoy. Got Henry. Henry's ball. Lady, marks back here, please, lady. Back two metres. Time back on. Takes the time to sum up the options. Looking for Swan. Here's Thomas. Got, I think, Blair back inside. Here comes the little man under the tackle. Great composure while tackled. And now Tuvi. On the head of Dawes, and he'll get a free. Gee, 
strategy. They had them well covered then. Big boy McAvoy was down there. We'll have to have another look at the free kick. Yeah, definitely there. Absolutely. That's that's just a, a smaller opponent. Time back on. Worried about his size. Yeah, it's just worried about the size of Chris Dawes in front. And you see, you see McAvoy was there as well. Should have been an easy spoil for the St Kilda defenders. Dawes to steal an early last quarter lead. Only a 20 metre kick. Great look at it from our overhead camera. A little bend right to left. And Collingwood by two points. Well, that was almost identical to the free kick that he received in the second quarter in similar circumstances too from Gwilt there who, as you correctly stated, is undersized against Dawes and that often happens when you're up against a bigger plate. They just draw you into a free kick as you're trying to just try to manhandle them out of the way. Well, as Richie has said on Twitter, this is it, Saints. Are you good enough to play finals football? Because here it is right now. Collingwood by two points. The setup is interesting. Three Collingwood players on the right against two St Kilda players. Off the side was Young, the activated sub. Lenny Hayes with yet another clearance. Reed, Milne, little jump kick back inside. Shaw did well. Now they've got to go. Maxwell was good. Thomas equally. Harry O'Brien. Blair and Geary overhead. Superior was Geary. There's a look at the confronting task for Geary. See Harry O'Brien down the line. Oh. That's why he went inboard, because O'Brien was standing there, but it's opened up now. Dawes needs to be clean. He is to Blair. Blair wanted Swan to go along, and he was coming short. Ducks the tackle. Wellingham's got to get around one. Handball wide to side bottom. Here comes Cloak in the pocket. It goes in that direction. Couldn't quite get it. Well done, Dempster and Geary. And now Fisher, the finisher. Not so on this occasion. Wellingham keeps it alive. Pounds the ball long and deep. That swan in the contest. How strong was he against Simpkin? That's a really unusual move, though. That you've got one of your best midfielders, your best clearance players, and you've started him at full forward in this last quarter. Watch the play on here. Swan will definitely want to give this off to the first opportunity that is created. He is that sort of guy. Now has to settle on the right foot banana from the boundary line. How well executed was that? Dane Swan with a miracle kick. Richard, I want to ask you a question about this. Do you think it's about the fact that Nathan Buckley believes that they needed another focal point up in their forward line? Why would he have taken him out of the midfield tonight, do you think? It's hard to work out. I guess they have got beams and side bottom and who can go in there in Pendlebury, of course, and maybe he just thinks that without Cloak and Dawes marking it too much down there, that Swan's actually a really viable option in a one-on-one. -on -one. There it is, the right foot banana. Swan's got a couple, Collingwood by eight points. Just perfectly executed there, wasn't it? Have a look at his reaction. He's just a match winner. He's now one out in the goal square. They're clearing it out for him, so... Bucks just rates him as his match winner, obviously. Here go the Saints. Del Sano running on his left. This is not beyond him from 60. Slicing ball, missed to the right. I can assure you guys too that Dane Swan is one of the strongest blokes on the planet in a one-on-one -on -one marking contest. He's really yeah. thick through the hip slingy, isn't he? Like, he doesn't get knocked off the ball. Yeah, absolutely. You can't budge him, and he's so smart too that when he gets in that situation one-on-one, -on -one, he is very, very dangerous. It's a good move. I like it. I think is it possible that he's got some sort of an injury that maybe he's restricting his running a bit? Well, I'll keep an eye on him for the next five or ten minutes, Timmy, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know on that one. I'll have a think about it. Here's Hayes. Going to have to do something exceptional from here, and there it is. Somehow finds Milne. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Sublime. A 
bullet from Lenny. He looked to give it twice then, Lenny. What one target he could have actually aimed the ball at, Richo. That was an unbelievable kick, a perfect kick. And the guns are just rising up to the top, aren't they, when it matters? Even the normally composed Buckley just getting a little ragged. As Milne comes in and kicks the goal. They're down by just one point, the Saints. Milne's got three. Well, they answered the challenge, didn't they, Richard? At halftime, we talked about you know, the players that needed to come back into this game and Del Santo and Goddard and Hayes and Montagna. They'd really lowered their colours to the Collingwood midfield in that first half. Milne had hardly been sighted. He kicked that first goal after half time. It was almost he ignited the side. Yeah. He's the igniter, all right. Had a quiet game last week. I reckon he was pretty keen for a good one tonight. Pretty happy, the little man with his third goal of the game. Has not had a game where he hasn't kicked the goal this year. An outstanding player over a long time. Stevie Milne. 254 games. People just have to understand that a small forward is... It's the toughest position on the ground. And to be able to do it for as long as what he has, as you just said, you just reeled off the stats, BT. It's, a, it's an unbelievable effort from Milne. Got hard, got a knock on the head earlier. Here's an inventive kick from Young. Geary did well to separate himself and Fasolo. Will upended in the tackle from Sinclair. Thomas keeps it alive. Danger, danger. Right foot snap to the near side. That's a win there for Collingwood because St Kilda backed one out of the uh, stoppage there. And so Collingwood had an extra player running forward there. Daisy just showing us the pink jocks today. <laughs> Most would find that strange. Dem stuff. Handball to no one. Beams to the opposite one. In the back. There's a late free kick after that. That play had been cleared. Look at their swan players with their arms up in the air. Swan Beams. and Goddard here. Long ball, Swan again. This time Simpkin across the face. Picked up by side bottom finds. Swan, Swan on the left boot this time. Couldn't get the elevation or lift in the ball. Fisher had to be precise, and he was. How good was the trap from Fisher? Oh, unbelievable the way that he trapped that. And then to lower his eyes and just make sure that they hit that target coming out of defence, that showed a lot of composure and pause as well. They've just got to look after the ball here, St Kilda. And ball out, and it's been smothered here by Thomas, who's really starting to work harder into this game. Thomas just trying to milk it out there, and there's the pinkies. As we throw it back in, I could go the rhyming on that, but we'll leave it there as Goddard. Trapped by Reed, sends it along without thought. Fish has got to go back, and he does. Simpkin protected him there, too. Got a tweet from Brock McLean saying, Ahmed Saar doesn't live in the garage anymore. Brock, I've got news for you, he's back in there. Graham, side bottom. In trouble. O'Brien, they've paid it all night. They have been consistent. Yeah, they have tonight. It's back in vogue tonight. I don't reckon we saw one last night at all. Did we try? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I can't remember one last night, but there's been a couple tonight. St Kilda trainer there in the white seat was bemused by it, wasn't he? Had a little smirk on his face. Here's Swan. There is that St Kilda trainer. He's enjoying the view rather than running the water at the moment. He's become a little stagnant in his work. As Collingwood go forward again. Ray looking for Goddard, intercepted Young. Quilt now, a chance on the counter. Oh, Kirby was very impressive overhead against Saab. Chips it, draws doors. There's the magnetic ball again. Yeah, this, this is the best game we've seen Chris Dawes play for a little while. He's worked hard tonight. He has, Richard, and I reckon they've missed him on a number of occasions yeah. too, Collingwood, when they've gone forward. He's made really good position. But how important is that last kick out of the defensive yeah. 50? They've got a little bit ragged with that last kick at the start of this last quarter. It's the most obviously the most important kick in footy coming out of your defence. Distance shouldn't be a problem here. 
But accuracy is. Doc Larkins, you're down on the boundary, Doc, as we see that behind sail through. Yeah, look, Nathan Brown's just come through for some work on his legs on the bench. He's really starting to cramp up. He's missed a fair bit of footy, Nathan Brown, but he's uh, been running around with following Cozzy, but he's just come off. They're trying to work getting right. Just remind us of gold tack and the injury, Doc. Yeah, we need to confirm it, Brian. He gets hit on the fibula bone, was very sore. It does open up the medial side of his knee. He hasn't reappeared since he went off in that quarter. OK, nice work. Tyson Goldsack off the ground with that injury that Doc spoke about. And there's Nathan Brown being worked on furiously. It's really tightening up now. He's had an open field in that third quarter, one end to the other, but it's just been locked down a little bit here for five minutes. Just showering the rest of the bench with his drink there. Decided to uh, send it all over the people sitting on the bench. Oh. Dempster. Beams trying to rip it out of there. Montagna's in there. Del Sano, have a look at that through traffic from Del Sano. Handball not great. Wellingham didn't have the peripheral vision. Ran into Denell. Side bottom with a real hasty handball. Now Montagna. Jack Stephen. Harry O'Brien couldn't take the mark. In goes Armitage. Maxwell there as well. It's becoming a desperate fight. 57,873 here tonight. To witness this game, Collingwood by three points. The Saints can win this clearance. They've got a more open-looking forward set up at, than the Pies at the moment. What are going forward now too, Richo? Yeah. Anybody's game, obvious statement. Lock but it done, really Lyon. is. Lyon. Elliot. Sinclair chased by Milne. Over the top to Cloak. He thought he was going to go back. Cloak turns it around the body. Swan and Fisher go at it. Fisher and Swan did well, Fisher. Did not panic. Good stuff from him. Now what does he do? Simpkin and Fisher, how well worked was that? Just experience. Been around for a long time, Sam Fisher. And Dane Swan went to ground in that contest. You don't see that very often. And it gave Fisher that couple of metres that he needed. Denell told to play on the turnover. That's what happens with the young players, and this was what happened Just with an old timer. Important. He's been important in this score already, hasn't he, Sam Fisher? St Kilda got a lot of players out this side of the ground. If they can transfer it, they could take it the length. Lingy's all over the fat side. Here's Milne. Half back. Does like a run. And is a good kick. Very good to the advantage of Jones. He and Young go at it. Jones and Young. Support from the Pies. I think it might have been Siegeman in there. Saad went to kick. Did he make contact? Was it the perfect tackle? Umpire says no. Good footy, no very no, well held up there by Collingwood. Some Kilda were out, but the way the Collingwood defenders all rolled around to help and the fantastic desperation. Great play by the Pies. That was good play by Tom Young. Clint Jones cool. made a really good burst into space, but he never gave up on the chase and forced this stoppage. Young, put beams really under the pump there. Now got to butter up again. Penelope thought about the handball. Beautiful mark. Taken inside by Elliott. Tucked into the arm, the arm. Took a bounce. That's too heavy for Thomas. Now it's a foot race. Fisher and Thomas. Thomas and Fisher. Look at the explosive pace by Thomas. What a magnificent pick up. What, what about that? It's a goal. Boy, oh boy, where are we? Did you see that? Amazing. BT, the pickup was just unbelievable. Fisher looked like he was going to gobble that ball in the air, but it just had too much heat on it. Went over the back, and then it just became a foot race. He was labouring here. Have a look at Fisher. But what about that beautiful silky wow. pickup there from Thomas? It, as soon as that got over the back, and it was going to be oh. a foot race between Fisher and Thomas, as good a player as Fisher is, Thomas always had the leg speed. But to pick it up running full pelt like that, and to execute the skill across the body. Geez, a good player. What about not, the sure about, <laughs> not sure about the finger work there from Daisy, but oh, it deserved a great celebration. Look at the supporters loving that. Collingwood by nine. The Saints trying to respond. Lenny, free kick, no. Off hands. Did he duck the head or was he tackled high? In the end, neither, but that's out of bounds on the full. Ducked into it, he said. Mar gets to Milne and oh Harry O'Brien just gave Milne one there. Free kick, free kick, Collingwood, Collingwood. Oh, that's just silly. Hey, 
Can you see what happened, BT? I saw that happen. Harry O'Brien gave Milne one to the face, and Milne retaliated. Margetts only saw the retaliation. It's the old schoolyard trick, isn't it? He's very unlucky. Yeah. What a game. Cloak, long, jolly. Out the back, Thomas again. Wraps up Will. Well, that trouble. He that's... probably dived on the ball. Oh, boy. It's not, it's not working for the Saints. Nick Greenwald would have been having a shot at goal down the other end. Unfortunately, the umpire only saw the retaliation and now goes straight back down and now Thomas has a shot at goal. And they have been very consistent with these all night, haven't they? Yep, any guy that's uh, dived on the ball is in trouble. Even if the other player, and on th in that occasion, when the player that dives in after him, their one intention, their sole intention is to lock the ball in, BT. They now don't the, want the ball to come out of there. Now, this kick suits Thomas. He's a right-to-left hooker of the ball with normal kicks. He's not great from set shots, though, no, Thomas. No, he's not. He's he, about he one does, in five, Thomas. Yeah, he doesn't make great connection, and he does tend to hook him right-to-left. So let's have a look at this. For a 15-point lead, comes back to the left and hits the post with that little... Gentle hook on that occasion. Oh, you've summed it up beautifully, exactly what you said, BT, but I guess you've just got to keep your cool and not retaliate in that situation. Well, of course you do, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it, you can't be selfish in a situation like that, and that's what it comes down to. You penalise your whole team. I mean, he may be right. Technically, he may be right, but it's just the wrong time to be doing that. Seems unfair because it's in your instinct, though, isn't it? Oh, if you're retaliated, at the local you bar, get hit. Yeah. If you're at the local bar, you can do it, Richo. <laughs> you can't do it out here. Del Sano gets the high. No advantage. Climb back on. You're going to see how good St Kilda are in this last seven and a half minutes oh, of this yeah. game. This is going to be their biggest test of the season. Boy, seven and a half minutes to get it right, the Saints. Do they want to play a part in the finals this year? Move it on. Play on. Play on. Well, they just can't get it inside 50 at the moment. Only five inside 50s for the quarter. This is a shallow entry, this one. I mean, the littlest bike on the ground cannot mark that. Whatever. It has to come to ground. It has to come to ground. He's the smallest bloke on the ground. He's just taken a contested mark in your attacking 50. Leonard Swan. Reed. Saints are going to send this back with a bit of interest. Lenny Hayes. Back inside. Finds Del Santo. Well, he wanted the centre ball, not on. Well, as a key forward in this situation, you've got to be 50 metres from the play to contest the situation. Montagna can search inside. Cozzi again with the hands, couldn't quite hang on. Brown, now he's jumped on the ball. Will he be penalised? No. Gee, I'd like to see whether or not there's a little bit of arm that was dragged in on Cozzi. Just watch this very closely, just to see whether or not... Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, that, that's happy for that to be playing on. I mean, we've seen less paid, but you'd, if you're going to pay those, you'll be paying free kicks all night. No, fair enough. Blair hovering over the top of it there. We'll want to be very careful. Lenny Hayes. St Kilda players appealing for the free. Luke Farmer, who's done a good job, decides to ball it up. So Collingwood by just 10. Plenty of time in this game. How many goals do you reckon left in this game? Two or three? Three. Three goals left. St Kilda. Well, the Saints are going to have to kick. They're going to have to. Two to, yeah, two, two to win it. This is Possibly. where they need to create a scoring opportunity from this stoppage too. Scotty Waters delivers yet another message. Pendlebury sitting on top of it. In the back. He's in front. He's in front. So, OK. Now they've got to make it happen. It's not going to be handed to them. We know Collingwood are a professional outfit. Harry didn't come at it. Graham stole it. Almost took it all away. Now O'Brien and turns it up again. Saad, the screw's been tightened. Danelle around the corner. Montagna, Cozzi couldn't get it. Del Sano kept it alive. No, he didn't. 
Just yeah. nerves in the players out there at the moment, isn't it? Gee, Graham nearly stole it, then Saad nearly stole it. That's so uncharacteristic of Collingwood and their defenders. I mean, normally they take much better care of the ball coming out. It's good pressure from the Saints, though, at the same time. Need a goal, the Saints. Really need it in the next minute or so. Here's Wellingham. Remember, once it gets down to two or three minutes with this lead, you can start to milk the clock. So they really do need one very shortly. Geary, inferred pressure, caused him to drop that mark. And that'll be touched over the line. Neutral territory on the wing. Buckley makes a call. Big boy McAvoy over the top, Jolly. Pendlebury out the back, Swan. Graham in amongst three Collingwood players. Bit of an opening here. Wellingham put his head there. Simpkin went just as hard. Wellingham's got a sore head. Big boy McAvoy goes forward. Over the line and out of bounds it'll go. To the boys, the umpire put the whistle to his mouth then with that contest. Ooh. I reckon he probably should have paid the free kick. Wellingham Ooh. there too high. They will have a look at that as well. Players head over the ball. Definitely free kick. Absolutely have a look at that. Unlucky not to get the free as well. Saw one very similar. He's recovered and he looks good, so yeah. that's going to be in favour of all. Another look at it. Just caught him. Out the side door is Swan. Montagna the intercept. What can they conjure up here, the Saints? Rewalt off hands. Milne lurking dangerously. And a ball up. So the Saints have got it where they need it. They just, they just can't find any space, though, inside 50 with all these stoppages. There's got to be a third man up here, yeah. which I don't think can just clear the immediate space. Just try and put somebody into a little bit of space. There's a couple of holes there. McAvoy does it, knocked down. Onto the ball is Seedsman. Went partially for the boundary line. It was a really well-weighted kick in the end. Cloak trying to knock it down. Elliott couldn't get it. Farron Ray been impressive all night. Now Blair. Blair plays on. Risky kick. Oh boy, big boys drop the mark. Gives it off to Graham. Graham steady. Short ball. Sarge. Outside his distance, B2. Yes, a little bit. Lives in a garage. Goes long. Big ball by Sarah to go. He's got it. Sarah's kicked the goal. The Saints are back. Oh, he got the distance quite easily. That's his third goal. Ahmad Saad, he's been good. Big boy McAvoy got in the way, dropped a mark, but got it into the hands of Graham, who used the ball well, found Saad, and then kicked. Didn't waste any time, didn't think about it, just went back and kicked the goal. Huge centre break clearance coming up. Unbelievable finish about to transpire here. Three and a half minutes. They're within four points, the Saints. In ten points or less games this season, St Kilda is zero and three. Collingwood are two and zero, so the pies have been good in the close ones. Blair trying to pirouette out of the action in there. Tough now. Every possession counts from now on. Not much that man can do at this point. Well, this is where you need all your best players around the ball to. Swan's now pushed up to the ball. And on the ground. I see Dane Swan's sitting on the ground at the moment with three and a half minutes remaining on the bench. I'm not sure why that would be. Shaw punches towards the boundary line. He's showing no signs of playing a part in this. Kick towards the boundary line. Now is it deliberate? Big decision! Yes! St Kilda free. Oh, Swan oh, still not coming on the ground. St Kilda have missed it up. It's a throw. The, the handball... The handball went to Lenny Hayes' feet. Very hard to control a handball like that. Swan gets back up now to come on. There it is. He generally only stays on the bench for about 35 seconds, maybe a minute, Swan. Are they going to milk it here? They've got numbers behind the ball. 
Look at Swan gesturing at Beams. Kick it and then come and get me on the ground. Well, he's on now. Blair's gone off. Swan's on. And they've got Wellingham to come back on again, too. He's just had a minute and a half rest. Now, to hang on to the ball for two and three-quarter minutes long is time. a huge job. Too long. Too long. Harry O'Brien kicks to Cloak. No winner in the air. Off hands, Elliott has got it in a position where Collingwood need it. And the boundary line is there. But they can't play for the no score here. I, I reckon the best thing for St Kilda is to force it behind and get possession of the football. So Richo says get it through the behinds. Beams. Jones. Hayes. Now Del Santo dribbles it. Pendlebury, dangerous kick. Cloak, Fisher, really bad bounce for both of them. Sinclair bullies his way in. Cloak gave the handball out. Thomas from near the boundary line. Out of bounds on the fall, so here's the Saints' chance. At least they've got possession. It's easy to lock you in on one side of the ground like this, though. So Collingwood will move all the defenders across the ground. They've pushed them up to... St Kilda just need to move the ball quickly from here. That's the best result for them because they haven't conceded the behind. Now they've got to try and open up the field. He had to do that, Rewell. If he came down the line, they would never have got it down the other end. Great decision. 144 remaining. St Kilda down by four points. Thomas on the wing. He's got to be careful. Was a deliberate umpire? Said no. Throw it in. Gee. Well, the Pies have had the ascendancy and the clearances this quarter. Saints need to win this one. Beams. Beams. They win the clearance, Richo. Bangs it down the line. Cloak and Fisher. And once again, the boundary line. 121 remaining. That's where the clearances are so important. Dane Beams. Another great night. It boils down to this for the Saints. Haven't missed final since 2007. Beams, high ball, cloak at the back. Fisher, need a mark, Donnell. Shaw did well to worry him out of it. Got it back inside 50. Side bottom hook around the body. Got to the goal square. Swan, did he get boots to it? No. Now a five-point ball game, and the Saints have possession with a minute remaining. Who's kicking in for the Saints here? That is Del Sano. Well, it's in good hands. Got Arthur yeah. Deller into the ground, though. He's at full forward. Here's Donnell. Got in the way, Elliot. Why did he play on? Why did he play on? He kicks the behind. You've got to go, you've got to go down the middle, I reckon, just as long as you can. Now. The worst Collingwood can do is a draw. The Saints do that, Richo. They go straight down the middle. Big boy is assassinated in the middle. He had to knock that on then. Rather than grab the ball, he just had to try and smash it forward for the Saints. Hey, listen, last night, Geelong moved it from one end to the other in less... 20, 20 seconds. Yep, they did. Here's Pendlebury. Huge moment in the game here, obviously. Defining. Plenty of time. 30 seconds. Cozzy. Rewalt's found Cozzy. 20 seconds. Cozzy goes deep. O'Brien's got to sit under it. He's dropped the mark. Right. A player's paid the free. Knock of the arm. That courage has saved the game. Oh, boy. I think that's it. O'Brien to the boundary. That could be out of bounds on the fall. There's five take a seconds. They need a mark. That's no good. <laughs> Collingwood are going to win. Blood rule. Justin, because this is ball. Blood rule. Justin. Blood rule. One second left on the clock. That is wait, going to be wait, it. Wait until the whistle. Run is surging out. But they won't be able to complete this in time. I'm not sure precisely when the clock starts. It goes the spiral. Colling have won. Colling would have won an epic encounter here at the MCG. Let's hear the song.
safe. So, a huge win here for the Pies. They've won by a goal in the end. Remarkable game. Let's get down to Cameron Lee. Well, Dave, it's a hard fought one, but in the end, great win. It's made it, uh, it's taken the full four quarters, and, uh, you know, we, I think we played some pretty good footy tonight. Probably lacked off a little bit in the third quarter, but uh, once you get away with the win, it's a good result. And some good composure at the end, and just be able to hold on when some Kilda kept on coming. Probably good practice for finals, Tom. Yeah, a couple of rushes of blood, mine in the pocket there, and young Billy Elliott too. But uh, look, you get away with those, you learn from them, and uh, hopefully come finals time, they'll have held us in good stead. Right on, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. Brendan Goddard there is furious about that free kick. Let's have another look at it in the closing seconds of the game. Harry O'Brien, Richo goes back. Is there contact with the arms? No, there's not. Look. Let's have another look at this angle. Harry O'Brien eyes on the ball. Milne comes in. Have a look at this, Richo. No. Have a look what happens after. No free kick, but look at this. They would have kicked a goal. St Kilda out. No one between them and the goal there. Look and that has cost them victory. No, it cost them a draw, BT. It a would draw, have been a sorry. draw. Yep. Scotty Waters absolutely furious. Goddard as well. And boy, I, there was no kick there, Richo. You don't want to criticise umpiring, but you've got to call it how you see it, and I don't believe that was a free kick. Down to Lingy. Yes, well, I'm with the man of the moment, Harry O'Brien. Was it a free kick? Um, oh, actually, I think I got paid a mark or, or a free kick. I'm just glad that uh, you got to slow, slow the clock down. In the end, really good to hold on. A quality game of footy against a good team, the Saints. Yeah, they, they you know, it, despite where they are on the ladder, they've, um, they've been in great form and it was just a grind all day. So, um, yeah, it was great to get the win in the end. And a really important win for you guys. Now gives you a chance of finishing top two in that all-important home final. Yeah, look, um, we've still got a tough run. We just got, we know that uh, we're building into something and yeah, we, we're hoping to hit the, uh, the final with some momentum. Well done, Harry. Good work, mate. Harry O'Brien, now he said he thought he got paid the mark. Let's find out what happened. Let's li listen to the umpire here very closely as we have another look. Harry O'Brien goes up, clearly no free. Didn't, didn't hit the arm the first time, and then he had the second there swing. There it is. It. Umpire says, tap on the arm. Well, the mark wasn't paid. Well, there's a lot of decisions in a game, but that one was crucial, and I don't believe that it was correct. I don't believe that he hit his arm. Unbelievable game. Collingwood have won by six points. St. Cleared up, so very nearly tied the ball game up in the dying seconds. And Collingwood will consolidate second place on the ladder. And the Saints, I think, will now be two games out of the eight. And they are absolutely devastated. That puts the Collingwood up into second. Adelaide can leapfrog them tomorrow with a win over Essendon. There's the live ladder as we speak. And there's St Kilda in 10th position. Nine wins, four games to go. They'd have to win every game. 13 games would probably get them in. Collingwood up into second position. Clear and outright second. Swans with a game in hand. Clint Jones not happy. And... You get the feeling they think they've just got away with it here, Collingwood. Yeah, no doubt. Look, the Saints threw everything at them. They knew that they had to win to realistically make the finals, and it didn't happen. And the Pies, they'll sing the song. They've had a victory here, the Pies. They play Sydney at ANZ next Saturday night. What a cracking game that'll be. 12-19-91 to St Kilda, 13-7-85.